Cool. We got time to hang out. It's just gonna sit there doing its thing, so. Anti-Semitic, uh, right-wing radicalizing stuff. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, mine defaults to one of three things. It goes back and tries to play, uh, Mezgeeks, Mezgeeks? Uh, the guy who did the, um, White Scar and the Auric in... Uh, armor that guy yeah it plays all of his videos just back to back forever or it plays john oliver because it's like hey you like last week tonight right and i'm like yeah i like it and it's like here's 24 hours of it in a row so it's fine i've seen every episode probably a dozen times I probably know his jokes better than he does. Still good though. I still love it. Ooh, we have one viewer. Is that you? Oh, nice. Well, hello to yourself in the thing. Oh, I can resend it. Hang on, give me like two seconds and I'll resend you. Is it not just inside of your studio? How very odd. Uh, not audio library monitor. Hang on, I'm just going to entirely re-add you. Oh, Jesus. Stupid 2FA. Yes, that's me. God damn, all right. Missions, invite, it's jones.adam763 at gmail.com. Editor. Okay, I just resent you the invite, so. But I'm gonna probably swap over and go live here in like 15 seconds. <clears throat> oh, okay, hang on. Before I go live, I'm going to turn on Oliver Audio. So. In three seconds, we're going to three, two, one. Good evening, I am Steve Thomas at Choice Minions on your social media of choice and welcome to our very fourth live stream. I'm joined by my co-host, Picker of rocks and a man I would vote most likely to beat a bear in a drinking contest. Adam Grimm, 
Beach Vacation Mando, Adam, what are you drinking drinking tonight? Wow. Wow. What are you doing, buddy? I am drinking some Five Alive tonight. <laughs> oh, boy. I am drinking hyper-caffeinated cola, so just in case anybody was wondering, that's, that's the speed I'm at tonight. So, uh, thank you for joining us. Tonight, we're going to be working on our second of two Blood Bowl teams. This is the Dwarf Giants. Uh, this really is what inspired me to start live streaming. Uh, I went looking for somebody who had painted these guys on the internet. Turns out uh, people have painted them, but nobody did a tutorial. So I thought to myself, well, I can fix that or I can complain about it. So I'm fixing that. But this is also one of my favorite fantasy races of all time. I love the dwarves. Adam, how do you feel about dwarves? I am a huge fan of dwarves. I love the fact that they are just super surly by nature. And it's amazing because I also pride myself on being surly. That's even though I'm not surly anymore. Well, apparently, according to Jamie. Well, we can work on that. Everybody, put mean comments about Adam in chat. Hey, Mitch. Yeah, hey. so that's what we're going to be painting here tonight. Actually, we're going to get started with skin tones right away. So I wanted to really bring in a, a better tutorial about skin tone. And as much as there are like a dozen of these dudes, most of them have almost no skin showing, which is really disappointing, but that's fine. We're going to work on the two dudes here that actually have skin tone. So let's get into it. Adam, have you ever actually, like, had a dwarf army or played dwarves in any way? Um, aside from our current D&D uh, &D campaign where we're all dwarves, Which is my fun. only other experience playing dwarf was, I guess, in the your, your really old campaign where I was the dwarf, the salt dwarf ranger. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the one-off where I asked the god if she'd ever been with a dwarf and if she wanted to. Hey, Rebecca. So, yeah. Um, actually, my first D&D &D character was a dwarf because all my friends got there the night before and had a sleepover and they made their characters. This was back in the days of AD&D. &D, and... Uh, I wasn't there because I had like scouts or cubs or something. Probably be, yeah, maybe it was cubs. Maybe it was beavers. Don't remember. It was a long time ago. At any rate, um, I played a dwarf in that. I got to play a dwarf thief because rogues weren't even a thing yet. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about the colors that we're going to use for skin tones. So these are our colors and I recognize that not most of them look like skin tone colors, but what we're going to do, and if you look at human skin tone, so let's let's look at my hand briefly and talk about how it looks. Um, you can see that there are just a ton of colors in human skin tone. So most people think of it as like that PG fleshy colors, but um, we also see, like you can see my veins are blue. There's a lot of other colors, especially when we start looking at it on eye angles and stuff like that. So um, these are the colors that I'm using. I'll just sort of line them up and I'll call them out as we're using them. Um, one thing that I wanted to do with all of these dwarves is give them a really uh, sun drenched kind of look. So like they've been, you know, doing the the conan thing they've been hanging out in the sumerian sun or whatever but let's get started oh thanks rebecca my dm skills are phenomenal for all things all times oh except v i should really read the entire comment before i start saying that you guys are saying nice things to me i mean Oh, okay, never mind. I read that wrong, and I was totally like, well, I mean, V's Dwarf was pretty much made just to fuck with you. That's true. Pardon my language there. That'll get bleeped out in editing. No, it won't. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> so, we're just going to start off by putting paint to the model. Uh, 
The fun thing about skin tone and really any base paint is that it doesn't matter too much. As long as we've got it like sufficiently thinned down and we can really just go to town. So you guys can see that I've previously prepared these models and just like when I was talking through our um, orcs uh, last Thursday, this team has already been painted somewhat. So I put uh, a light gray uh, base coat on all of them. And then I ran over these actually with just a uh, Payne's gray ink wash, just so that I can see, you know, better the details that we're trying to cover. And then now we're all we're really doing is just slapping paint on them. Um, I'm not going to be particularly plussed about making this these first couple of layers really all that neat. It's just about getting paint on models. So um, I am going to try not to go over areas that I have recently painted. Um, with all paint, well, with all acrylic paint, coming back to an area that is wet or partially dry is a good way to, to destroy that paint because it'll lift back up the model. V's the worst and always kills you. Really? I should... Adam, have you even had a D&D &D character die? No, I have not had a single D and D character die out of all of the ones I've played. Not one has died. The closest, I guess, technically Drayden should have died, but JP's like, we have two sessions left. I'm not killing off your character. Well, that was nice of him, but also that was when we we mathed wrong, and like I, it was like an instant kill on me. Oh yeah. Oh five E with your instant kill rules. So. Yeah, what, it's what, uh, your total hit points in the negative? Yep. So if you go negative 100% of your original hit points, so not what you started the turn with, but of your max HP, you are dead. Just straight up dead. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, what happens when I challenge a uh, CR, like, 15 Demon of Hell to personal combat and then promptly lose. Well, it'll happen. I have to say yeah. that I have had a lot of characters die, but most of my character deaths actually took place in second edition. Um, AD&D 2 had a lot of higher level monsters that definitely had the ability to just instant kill no save characters because they just did. That was something the designers thought was fun. But second edition was a very different game from fifth edition. Yes, I never played second edition. I have played, I think, every edition of D&D &D for at least one game. Like, I haven't played... Um, yeah, I've played original D&D &D as well. Um... It was not good. It was not good. I think I started with... Four? That's fair. I want to say 4.5, but I know that's not a thing. Uh, yeah, the... The edition I've played probably the most of is still third and a half, though we're getting real close. Well, three, three and a half together, we're still way up on those games than we are on five, but five is yeah. getting close to taking over third and a half. Um, yeah, like I remember doing the play test for five with JP back when science was still a skill. Well, no longer though. But then they added in the artificial class, which I guess is like science is your power, but it actually kind of gives you stuff you can do instead of just, hey, you have the skill. It's called science. Okay, cool. What does that mean, even though? Well, it means you can do science. I mean, I do like the artificer. I like magical engineers, but it is a really complex class right up there uh, with 
Have you ever used metallic paste? I can't remember what they called, but it was back in the 80s and they had a tube of it. Oh yeah, it's rub and buff. Uh, you can still get rub and buff. And actually I do sort of have a newer material Mitch that's a lot like that. Um, I can pull it out here in a minute. I'm just gonna keep getting this first base coat on this dude as I find the rest of his skin, but I'll show you uh, what the modern equivalent of rub and buff is. Yeah, like I'm, I'm getting some graphite powder for my Mandalorian armor to give it like the polished iron look. Yeah, and there are uh, a lot of, like not specifically metal powders for painting. There is, um, who is it? I want to say Secret Weapon has metal powders that they're coming out with now. Um, but not, I don't think, it, I haven't used them yet. We'll put it that way. Oh no, it's not. It's Green Stuff World has just straight up metal pigment that you can buy again. So, uh, greenstuffworld.co.uk. Um, you can head over there and take a look at it. I haven't used it yet because getting stuff from green stuff world still takes me like four to six weeks so i do have an order in for rollings roller pins and some other stuff but i didn't put metal powder on this one just next time is this uh, the, are you gonna do non-metallic metallics on the dwarves because i know you did it on that one test model oh yeah 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 um the idea with oh well one or the other of these Blood Bowl teams, and the choice is up to you guys eventually, uh, is which one is going to Armies on Parade. So that's a competition that Game Moves Workshop puts on every year. One of these two Blood Bowl groups is gonna go to Armies on Parade in 2022. So the choice is up to you guys eventually, which one we enter, but I wanna paint them both to competition quality. So we're about, 85% of the way there on our demo model. And then, uh, yeah, we'll do the other one. Hang on, I'm just gonna try and dig through the drawers of disorganized mess and find the, uh, what I, what I like using for metal scratches. Hang on. In the meantime, Adam. Yes, Steve. <clears throat> Tell us a story, man. Sorry, I'm just like digging through things. Oh, there they are. Um, yeah, I got them. So, uh, hmm. since since you didn't get to the story quite yet, uh, these yep. are our weathering pencils by AK Interactive. I just picked up a couple of sets to see how they work, but, uh, and I got a model here I can demo on. These are fun. Um, we will when I get the right one out. So you can see here, it is metallic pigment. No, no, I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't use these on a full armor paddle, but it's just a regular pencil basically. Um, but you can dip them in water. So the medium that the graphite is, or not graphite, but the lead is, is actually, it's basically watercolor. So what I can do is I can actually just draw on scratches and stuff, which is super great when it comes to not having to do the fine brush controls part of making scratches on things. But the other fun stuff with these things is because they're, because they are um, acrylic based, you can see, I can rub it off too. So I can make those scratches on the model. And you can see those pretty well. They're light, but I can also just go back with regular old water and they're gone. It's actually really great because I bought a bunch of them. Yeah, it doesn't dry out and stuff either, but I bought a whole bunch of rust colored ones and that's how I did some of the weathering on the orc armor. So you'll get to see these again later when we're doing weathering on some orc boys. Uh, let's get back to painting. I don't, don't worry about it, man. 
Yeah, no, they are super handy, Mitch. Like, I cannot tell you how impressed I am with them as far as uh, not just being able to put them on and scrub them the back off, but you can actually mix the, the medium, like what the pencil lead is made out of, is soft enough that you can soften it down with water and then like make drip effects and stuff with it too. So that's how we're gonna eventually get to the um, the weathering on the orcs and maybe some light weathering on our, our dwarf giants here. So um, I'm just gonna keep going. So uh, I'm gonna use Arabic's shadow as our other skin tone on these guys. Just so that there's some diversity, you can see that we're pretty transparent still on the first dude, but we'll let that coat just sort of set up, weather down a little bit, you know, harden up while we do the other guy. Yeah, I can imagine you said that uh, there was an entire paladin that you did in rub and buff. And yeah, that would have looked super cool, actually. I'm. I never got into the rub and, rub and buff thing, other than I can't talk right now. Uh, but I have seen it used and it always, it looks great at larger scales, I think, than minis. I don't think I've been brave enough to even think about it on a mini. I don't know. I watch um, Adam Savage on Tested. He loves rub and buff for things, so. And he's a model maker. I mean, that's what his job was before Mythbusters, so. Yeah. There's a bunch of different sets. So I bought the one that was all primary colors because I like mixing colors that way. Uh, and then one that is just rust and streaking grime and stuff. Yeah. No, for sure. That stuff does come out really shiny. Adam, did we... We painted one of your dudes with uh, Malto Chrome, didn't we? Malto Chrome? Malto Chrome? Uh, yeah, we used that on um, Vulcan to highlight the edge of his sword. And yeah. I think the face of the lion head shoulder pad he's wearing. That stuff is super shiny. Oh god, it is so bright. It is like mirror finish. So, again, just putting down some base coats and, you know, throwing stuff on. Oh, man. So, we have D&D this weekend, Adam. Yes. Yes, yes we, we do. Do, do you, do you remember wh what uh, happened at the end of last week, other than Dan peeing on someone's floor? Um... The last thing, we were hiding in that one dude's secret room and there was maps and daggers on the table and we were also not subtly stealing the daggers. Uh, and we very we very much glanced over. We're like, oh, cool, a map, whatever. Uh, and then, you know, one of our after game meta questions, you're like, no, the map is important. Yeah, I like I like giving you guys the opportunity to realize that some things that you might not have thought of were important. I really love doing the after, the post meta questions for y'all. I know that I no really meta gaming is a thing, the, uh, but um, sorry, go ahead. I was thinking that the map was pretty important because it was like, oh yeah, you know, here's a table with some stuff on it, blah, blah. Oh, this table, you can actually see a defined map on it. Maybe that's important. Well, I, I do like making uh, fantasy maps. So it's one of those things that I like to put detail in. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to play in person again. But oh, so, so much. As, as our province slowly but steadily heads towards another lockdown. Yep. Yep. Oh boy. Oh well. So again, you can see, once I sort of touch on a place, even if I don't have good coverage, like there's plenty of 
this area that is still very transparent, right? Um, I'm just throwing on the paint and then even if it's super transparent still, we're just gonna leave it to dry. There is, there is no faster way to mess this stuff up than by touching wet paint over and over again. I have learned this the very hard way. I am also guilty of that. Then you rip paint and then your nice smooth blends you spent the last two hours on are gone. Cry, order shame pizza. Shame Think about pizza giving up the hobby. Pizza Sorry? Is Shame Pizza always Pizza 73? It's always Pizza 73. Pizza 73, for those who don't live in Alberta, um, Pizza 73 in the rest of Canada is known as Pizza Pizza. It is disgusting for anybody who doesn't live in Canada. It's bad. It is It is worse than Domino's bad. Uh, but it is not Little Caesar's bad. Yeah, well, Little, Little Caesars describes their pizza as exactly what it is. It is hot. It is ready. It is not good. It is not plentiful. It is hot. It is ready. That's it. Anyway. At any rate, Pizza 73 is uh, the meal I use to comfort myself when I'm feeling bad. So I've renamed it Shame Pizza. Because shame pizza. Um, last week, uh, Jamie and I actually got pizza from Pal Pizza, oh, which yeah? is like authentic Chicago style pizza. So the t the sauce is on top of the top. Oh wow! It was really really good. I will definitely be having that again. Though pizzas, the the my biggest complaint is that the large pizza is thirty two dollars, and it is eight slices. Wow. But it is like casserole, right? Like it's like a good two, three inches thick. Yeah, like we're like you know, it's a small pizza. Like it's not a small pizza, but you know, it's not super big. But when you pick up the box, it is heavy. That's how you and know like, it's, it's good. They layer it like it's like dough, cheese, topping, cheese, topping, cheese sauce. That sounds like the right amount of cheese, if I'm honest. Right? And I I ordered extra cheese on it, and Jamie's like, that might have been a mistake. And I was like, extra cheese is never a mistake. You know, I've thought that for most of my life, but I have, in fact, ordered pizza with too much cheese on it. That is a thing that can definitely happen. It can happen. Now, as far as good pizza that I like in Calgary, um, Chicago deep dish actually ranks up there. I know for many others it does not, but those people are wrong, and possibly bad well, people. Deep dish, I find it also depends on the location you go to. Oh yeah, I I live like in a community one... that has yeah. one, so uh, literally just down the road. Yeah, there's there's a Chicago deep dish just down the road from me, and when I lived downtown earlier, like not earlier, but like a few years ago. I ordered from there all the time and it was so good. And I ordered there from there just after I moved back. Yeah. And it was, it was like chewing on old leather and cardboard. That's unfortunate. Yeah. It went downhill quite a bit. Maybe it was just cause like I smoked a lot more weed back then. So I was just permanently munching out. And then, you know, when you're munching out, it's pizza. That's fair. There is a certain amount of, Man, I am just, I need something going into my mouth right now. That, no one's, uh, no one's um, munchy story will beat JP's salt and vinegar chip nachos, where he's like, I just needed a vessel to get the cheese to my mouth. That's disgusting. Yeah, and he's like, I knew full well this was a mistake. So I have a friend who definitely, we got high as teenagers, and uh, he decided to, that he couldn't wait for uh, bacon to be finished cooking. Needless to say, always wait for your bacon to be finished cooking because raw bacon, not a great idea. Not a great idea. If you order extra 
Oh, to order too much expertise, you need to order extra sauce and toppings. I vote that you always order extra sauce. Um, if I was yeah. to fight for anything in my life, it would be that all pizza needs to be saucier. Just saying. Like, yeah, I'm. I am with you on that, Steve. I do like a lot of sauce on my pizza and a lot of cheese. I can come and go with less cheese or more cheese. Um, like, it, it sort it, of it, depends. I will say it, it does depend on where I order from, whether or not I put more cheese on it or not. Jamie says that Pows was a brick of, of pizza, which I can see that. I can see yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like it's it's rectangular shape. The slices are square. You get eight slices for a large pizza, and I think I ate. I ate three. I'm not gonna lie. I ate three, and then I was like satisfyingly full for the rest of the night. That's fair. Uh, I have probably the most pizza I've ever sat down and just like ate was as again a teenager. I think I managed to plow through three large pizzas in about six hours or so by myself. Not my proudest moment, but also not sad about it. Not sad about it. Yeah. Um, do you remember my old roommate, Tyson? Yeah. Yeah. So one night I watched him eat two extra large pizzas in a single sitting. And like, it took him like an hour and a half, maybe. That is both impressive and marginally horrifying. He missed four days of work after that. He was not feeling good. Oh, I'm Mitch. I'm well aware that sauce and cheese are the things that add to the expense of a pie, but like, they're the good parts. They're the parts I want inside of my mouth. I mean, mostly. Yeah, like, uh, you know. I will eat but basically yeah. anything in pizza form, but like, I'm really there for sauce and cheese. Everything else can change. Like, it could be tenderi sauce and like, I don't know, broccoli on there. As long as it's sauce bread cheese it's a pizza counts i'd eat it i mean just look at all like the weird boston pizza pizzas that have like different sauces you know, oh the spicy cactus the pierogi pizza that sauces um sour cream yeah, I'm I'm always in favor of like new experiences as far as like pizza, like expanding the definition of what is a pizza. But like, I don't know. I'm I'm maybe I'm weird. I don't I don't find that there is like a sacred. This is what makes pizza other than sauce. Doesn't matter what type of sauce, cheese doesn't really matter what type of cheese and, and and bread like yes you can argue some of those things are flatbread but i don't care it's not that big a deal to me you know what the key word in flatbread pizza is it's pizza is it, yeah and if you can like, call I've, I've neapolitan pizza style pizza. oh yeah if you can call neapolitan style pizza like the authentic pizza right yeah, this stream is turned into Pizza 101. Uh, if you can call Neapolitan pizza, pizza, and, and claim it is the most authentic form of pizza, sure. Lots of people, I've heard, I've, I've heard that, that, I've heard that. Yeah, I, I have heard that. It's just um, flatbread. It's just flatbread. It's flatbread, flatbread. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say that I am not really a fan of Neapolitan pizza. I I think it's fine. It that style? I think it's great. I mean, it's better than most thin crust because at least it's like chewy and has some like flavor texture going on. But like, this is true. I don't know. Also, it's pizza. It's, I'm not going to hate it. Yeah. 
you know, maybe I've just had not good Neapolitan style pizza. That's fair. It happens. I mean, there's. How do I feel about pineapple on pizza? Listen, you 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 got me over a barrel here. That is the one thing that I don't want on my pizza. I don't. I just don't. It's if great heathen, if you like it, but <clears throat> sorry, did you just call me a heathen? Yes. Why? Pineapple pizza is amazing. Hawaiian pizza is my favorite pizza. That's okay. Cool. You do you, man. I'm, I, mean, I'm... I never get to eat it because Jamie also doesn't like pineapple on pizza. I just heard her cheer in the kitchen. Well, she should be cheering. Pineapple is all good. Not all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> For me, um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of sweet things on pizza. Again, we are splitting hairs on this. I love pizza. Yeah. I will eat pizza in all of its forms. If it has pineapple on it, it still lives through the bonus round of being pizza. So this is true. Like, I, I do get where you're, you're coming from. Like, Maybe I'm just a pizza snob. I don't know. Uh, hey, I'm not going to, you know, hate on somebody else's love or desire. So we're starting to get pretty close on the base coats on this guy. We're, we've got one more to go probably on this dude. So even with many base coats on these, like we're somewhere between two, two to three, maybe four on these guys, you can still see that there is a variety of skin tone going on. Um, not like a huge variety, but because of that Payne's Gray uh, wash that I did long before this stream started, um, we've tinted all the shadows in the sky light blue, L not light blue as in the color light blue, but um, just one of those things like it is a thin coat of dark blue, blue black. And so it's always going to kind of stain the recesses of this dude. So even if we look like up on this armpit, I don't know how eh, it's coming up. Um, even in the full light of my cameras, it's still tinted darker than the areas around it. And that's that's what we want. We want it to be so that no matter no matter where we're looking at the skin, it's got dimensionality to it. Because the worst thing you can do to human skin is leave it flat or in this case dwarf skin um, so we're gonna get these base coats on which we're just about there and then we'll come back and start adding more of the volume to the actual uh, skin and we're gonna modulate based off of actually a bunch of factors how exactly we render the skin so that'll be that'll be cool that'll come up here in not too long at all as I quickly Go around the model one more time. Lazy and simply order meat and lots of cheese slash sauce. I mean, that is a good way to go about it. And Rebecca, I saw your comment, but it, it got past me. What kind of lights do I paint it? I have two Lifex um, full color rendering bulbs. Um, I can show you at some point. Uh, well, we'll if you follow me on social media, you can actually see it. They're just two cheap IKEA lamps, but the bulbs themselves are high CRI smart bulbs that I can change the actual light temperature on. So there are there is one bulb over that way. There is another one over that way. Uh, and they're sort of converging somewhere around here. Um, just sort of to eliminate shadows. I am probably gonna replace both of them, but for right now, they're high color rendering index, so high CRI LED bulbs that output at maximum a thousand lumens. So they are very, very bright bulbs when they're all the way up. We're at about 75% because when I turn them all the way up, um, I'm pretty sure I can see through my hands, like just straight through them, so. I do like, and and when I say that I'm going to replace them, um, I I have some new colors or new lamps. I'm using cheap one. 
yeah um i'll be the first to say i am partially colorblind so i am red green colorblind so the high cri bulbs uh i actually do use color correcting light on them and then correct again in camera to bring it back to what i hope is real life color um yeah so i do actually use white that is tinted highly towards red just it's pink it's not like daylight color it is mostly pink because then other people see the colors properly yeah well don't tell me what to do mitch i can paint under whatever i want but yeah all right um so i've been going through the games workshop because I, I, I wanted to look at some of the oruk stuff yeah um but I dis discovered an interesting section called the licensed products section. Mm. So you can order like the like McFarland toys, giant space marine. Um, you can get the the two Marvel comics. And the one that actually really got me is from the Koyo store, which is a paint your own space marine pin badge. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a little flat pin of a. Primaris Intercessor. Yep. But it's blank. Yep. So you can paint it however you want. But so then you can have, have your own chapter. Faction, yeah. Mastery, mystery faction pin badges. And it's just like, you got a towel pin. Cause I'm, but I mean, who really wants a fish communist pin? I'll, I like fish communists. I actually do really enjoy towel. I just wish they like, they get a really bad rep for not being in good as in close combat, but they like standard Tau and if you go like Tau Fire Warriors against Imperial Guard, their weapon skill is the exact same. <laughs> Won't paint long after the radiation takes you down. Hey Sean, how's it going, man? Uh listen. Cancer's just fine. But yeah, there is actually some really cool stuff. The McFarlane uh, toys also put out the Necron Warrior in the same scale as the Giant Space Marine. I love that thing. That is, it makes me happy. I think Sean, if I'm... Tommy Fish. Yeah. Uh, I think Sean has one of the big McFarlane uh, dudes. Maybe not one of the McFarlane ones. He might have, he might have one of the other ones. The other company who's not McFarlane? They've released three through McFarlane. Uh, so there is the regular intercessor, there's the assault intercessor, and there is a uh, warrior, a Necron warrior. Yes. Okay, so right now on the palette, um, I just put down some Arden green, um, which is kind of a desaturated yellowish green. Um, and then I've put down some Catabric blue. Um, I'm using this as a general shadow color, so I'm actually going to shadow most things on the mini with that. So um, I'm going to take these two flesh tones and we're going to start getting shadows on the flesh tone because that's what we do. I need to grab my crap brush. Hang on. You have five, Sean? Are they all the same one? Or are they all just the intercessor? Doctors don't cause cancer. Doctors diagnose cancer, Mitch. You're going to be spreading misinformation. We're going to have to have a... I don't know. There's literally nothing Stern I can talk do. talk with your mother. Stern talk with your mother. But also, if you never go to the doctor, it's never actually cancer. Nailed it. Okay, you know what so. is a Sigmar army that I kind of forgot about? What's that? There's the in, uh, I don't know if the Deepkin. Oh, fish elves. Yeah. I was just, just kind of was like, who are these guys again? Oh, it's the fish elves. Yep. That guy has a scary looking swordfish on a leash. Yep. I oh, painted a those... bunch of them when they first came out. They're not bad. Yeah. Um, we got the, the orange squid or orange octopus. Yeah, and then I have uh, a couple of 
oh, what are they called? Namarthi Reavers that are painted as well. So the the Reavers are the, I think they're the bow ones. They're just the regular troops for, for I don't know, for ID. So you can see what I'm going to do like here is just pretty broadly put in a shadow tone and then we'll come back and blend this in. Um, I'm just choosing the lower parts of major muscles or parts where I know there's going to be a lot of shadow from the model. And pretty soon here, I'm going to detach this guy from his beard because once I've sort of got shadow tones in place, I've got a pretty good idea of volumes and light direction and stuff. So then I can pull them apart, stick them to something that's going to make it a little easier for me to paint all this. And then we're going to keep working on easily accessible skin tone. Uh, Steve, Sean would like to know if uh, either of us would want to paint one of the big gray um, blank McFarlane toys. Uh, maybe at some point? I have... Oh man, so every time we stop streaming, I'm like... I want another other streaming project or another other project to talk about on camera. I could literally stream five days a week, but it would, it wouldn't, it, it would be fun, but uh, I'm not sure that it would be the greatest content after the, the third project I start or the sixth project more likely that I start. So again, I am putting this blue green everywhere. So. You guys can see how that renders out the skin tone. Um, putting it into this light pink sort of color, the pink yellow that they use as this is just uh, basic flesh from scale 75. So that is what this guy's painted with. Uh, you can see that it sort of creates this like sea green kind of color, which I'm it's enough of a contrast that we don't need to use a ton to make our shadow color. Like we don't need to paint like black or, you know, um, Reichlin flesh shade is a really popular one for, for most people to do flesh tone. This just creates more interest in the shadows, I feel. And it's a fantasy world. We can do anything we want. There's nobody to tell us no. A wizard did it. It was the wizards. Yep. The wizards made the sun have awkward shadows in our fantasy land. Shut up. Actually, so Blood Bowl, fun story. I was I found this out because I've been playing a lot of the video game Blood Bowl. Uh, it's still played in the old world. So it's not in Age of Sigmar. Uh, apparently Sigmar has no time for fun, but it is uh, still in the old world, entirely in the old world, which I thought was weird slash neat. I, I can hear. I don't Jamie have to playing. film it. <laughs> yes, I, I can do. Hear playing the stream uh, from the kitchen. Nice. Uh, yeah. Same two bolt and pistol and two chainsaw. Yeah. The pistol and chainsword are the assault intercessors. So that was the second round. The first round was just the intercessor and um, yeah, it was the intercessor and the warrior was the first round. Yes, I believe you are correct on that one. Okay, so we're taking that same tone and because I'm starting off with a a much yellower skin tone and there's also more greens in the skin tone to start with i'm gonna put a little bit more blue into our mixture um uh, just again i'm trying to create contrast on the skin not necessarily dark so that's why we're using two fairly like neutral tones to put these shadows in we don't have to shadow with dark colors we can create contrast in a huge number of ways and this is just one of those ways that we can do it so again with this more mid mediterranean middle eastern skin tone i think in if i look at the actual bottle i think it's air yeah arabic shadow so there you go 
Um, uh, you want to know something fun about Age of Sigmar that I just figured out? What's that? <laughs> the old hammer dark elves are yep. um, are part of the forces of order. Yep. Dude, I there is a very secret project that I need to talk to you about that uh yeah. Yeah, I definitely know that dark elves are a part of order. All the elves are now a part of order actually. Don't yeah. have to film it. Every time I look up and see that, I'm like, why wouldn't I monetize all of my hobbies? Capitalism, I'm actually baby. Looking at the the some of the dark elves sets they're they're cheap. And there's wow. a lot fewer of them than there used to be. So Yeah, like right now I've seen uh Dark Shards, so that's the crossbows, coarse airs, uh Drake Spawn Knights, Dread Spears, Bleak Swords, uh Drake Spawn Chariots. Uh, Gurge Runner Chariots, and that's, I believe. There is also the Hydra and the whatever the alternate is for the Hydra. Uh, the Charybdis. Yeah, there you go. Charybdis. Oh, uh, yeah, the Executioners are sold out, Blackguard are sold out. And I think uh, that's mostly because the... Uh, in the meta, Blackguard and... So, in the meta for Age of Sigmar right now, um, you can take all of these, all those dudes as a part of the Cities of Sigmar army, and yep. in Cities of Sigmar, you can use uh, the Sorcerers as one of your casters, and in 2nd edition, the uh, caster, your Sorcerers, can nerf or can basically Commissar any of the dark elf units and get plus two to cast. And there is almost nothing else in Age of Sigmar that gives you plus two on your uh, magic rolls other than her murdering a uh, dude, uh, like a dark, a dark elf. Wow, dark elf, that. We got there, it's fine. Yep. But you know, we got there. Yep. But yeah, now nice. because I'm looking at dark elves, now I have to see if there's any dark elf books. Any what? Books. I know, I know there are dark elf books. Like there's the whole Melkith. Yeah. Series. And uh, so all of like the different. old world still exists in the fiction too. It and it yeah. pours over into the AOS lore because uh, all the gods still remember the old world. And they're all still around. Although, uh, spoiler alerts for anybody who hasn't read uh, Broken Realm Techless yet, which I don't think anybody on our stream has. Uh, but Nagash yeah, is dead again. Again? Yeah. He got murked by uh, Techless. Oh, Techless is the high, high elf, elf wizard? Dude? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah he so, was the old hammer, too. Yeah, in the book that just came out last week, I guess, uh, on last Saturday, uh, it started delivery. Um, yeah, the the end of that book is that Nagash is like sent back into yeah. the realm of death in the form of an inky black cloud and is like, I'll get you, Techless! You know, hey, Dr. Claus hey. style. Yeah. I'll get you, Gadget. Next time. Yep. Oh, such a gadget was such a good show. It was. I was. Hey. I may have been hanging out in Vince Ventrella's stream last night, uh, making Inspector Gadget jokes. So. The Dark Elf starter box is actually one of the more expensive start collecting boxes. Yeah, but it also comes with a lot of Corsairs and a Sorceress and a Hydralisk. Or not Hydralisk, man. A Hydra? Uh, uh, yeah, it comes with the Hydra, the Sorceress, a box of Corsairs, and a Chariot as well. Yeah. Oh, right. I forgot about the Chariot. So uh, you can sort of see where we're going with this shadow tone and what it's doing for our dudes. So um, you can see it really on both of them. Um, having that blue-green color in the shadows to work from 
uh, and then coming up to the nice warm skin tone is going to give a lot of um, it gives us a lot of contrast to play with. So not just contrast of light and luminosity, but now we also have a contrast of of hue. We can also use contrast in other ways to really like for this guy. You can see that we're using all sorts of uh, luminosity. We're using color value. We're using all sorts of techniques to really boost the amount of contrast that he creates. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing to all of these guys because competition painting now is 100% about how much contrast you can create. Smash that like button like it's five kobolds in a trench coat. Thanks, V. Yeah, if you like this channel, go ahead, tell your friends that this channel exists because that would really help us out. Uh, yeah, it would greatly. Hey, but we have five people watching. Ooh, thanks all five of you. Let me see. Uh, Mitch V, Rebecca, Sean, Jamie. Jamie, there we go. We named him. We got y'all. We named our fans. Yay. Someday we won't be able to do that. Today is not that day. I mean, I don't know, like, on our first read, randomly when we suddenly had, like, 25 people. Oh, that was because V got Wolf's uh, Discord to come over and watch. I don't know who Wolf is. He's a streamer. He's a nice guy. Oh, cool. He sent people our way. I like that. He did. It was. Oh, we, lo we just lost someone. I'm voting that it was Jamie and or uh, V. Possibly Rebe. Possibly yeah, me. I might have stopped watching us. I'm still watching us. Oh, that's good. I like that. But I mean, I, I'm watching us now through... The, the studio uh, mode? Yeah, yeah, through the studio mode. That's fair. I don't count anymore. So, I... Again, I'm pretty close to the point where I'm now going to pull this guy off... Um, you can see there's huge gaps, like just giant, awful gaps in what I've got going on right now. So uh, it's because these guys aren't actually like glued together or anything. They're just being held together by their easy to assemble-ness. So we'll pull them apart. We'll fix a lot of the shadow placement here in a second. But now that I've kind of got a good idea for where global shadows are going, uh, we can start to really build depth into them and build volume for muscles. So we can do that in just a second here. Adam, did we miss the news? Actually, my timer just went off right as you said my name. Oh, it's boy. Been 45 minutes since we started. Nice. All right, guys, let's do the news. Let's do some news. Do 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 do. Ah, there's our music. Yeah, the, the music. Yes. <clears throat> All right, give me one second here. All right, so fantasy news today. Oh my God, uh, every time I look at it, I get too excited. This is Bellacor. Uh, many of you, some of you, uh, will know him as oh. the Demon of Darkness, but look at new Bellacore! <laughs> look at how gorgeous this boy is! Oh, Holy the new crap. Bellacore is amazing! Yeah, he's giant. Uh, that base is actually a part of the kit too, which is super exciting. Like, that is the coolest chaos base I've ever seen. Uh, a dead chaos warrior on that base. I oh, mean, that's you have two options. Let's let's. Yeah, you can oh, have I an ultramarine me. down there too. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely do the dead ultramarine. Uh, so the sculptor on this, because I want to call him out, uh, Darren Latham of Games Workshop. He's the now art director for Games Workshop. Uh, do sculpted this thing because it was a personal pet project, but holy man, uh, the detail on this, just how well it represents the old sculpt while being like this guy looks like he could actually take on Archaon now, which is insanity, uh, but also super cool. I'm glad that there is a demon prince out there that looks this good. Um, I don't play Chaos, but like 
hell, Chaos Undivided just got one of the coolest models in the game. So, this is true. Yeah. If Chaos Space Marines were better in Kill Team or Tabletop, I would probably want to play them. But the fact that they didn't get two wounds just bugs me. Yeah. Can, uh, hey, they do have two I've, wounds now in they do, ninth okay. edition. I hadn't checked. I hadn't checked um, but is, has that made that over to Kill Team yet? No, because Games Workshop hates their most profitable game. Yes. Moving right along. More Games Workshop news. Oh man, the old croak is just so cool now. Look at that. Ugh. Oh man. It is mind blowing. So this is the new old croak model for um, or Lord Croak. Alt croak, alt croak. Uh, this is the new centerpiece for the Seraphon army. Uh, Croaks, he is the magical end times immortal being for the Seraphon army. So this is the like lizardman army from the old world. Um, man, this model, I don't particularly care for uh, Croak's actual sculpt, like the actual figure of Croak not my favorite it's it definitely gets lost in the model itself in their paint scheme um you know unaging zombie undead can't die lizard not really my steam but like oh man the it really comes down to the runes around him sorry you remember what Croak species is called? Uh, he's a slon, isn't he? Yep. Yeah. They are the only race in Warhammer that is in both, aside from humans. But like they're the only like fictional race that like from fantasy that got ported over to 40k. That were they're actually like the last holdover from when Old Hammer was actually just a planet in the empire of men in 40k and that got retcon quick but what they did leave over was the slon yeah. who were uh the guys who made the orcs in 40k they made the angriest fungus of all time yeah it is i mean i don't know how games i don't know how anybody comes up with that sculpt but it definitely projects like power and mastery and like the like weird magical aesthetic of the seraphon so well um i again i really love the model not a huge fan of the actual like figure but still super cool super cool not maybe as cool as bellicor but i remember when games workshop first added the lizard man that's fair I I was not there for that. I was off playing D D or something, something else. Um, yeah, I have a feeling. So in the last uh, nine months, let's say we have had Teclas and the Lumineth uh, Lumineth Elf Lords. Um, we have had Old Croak come back. We have had Bellicor now show up. Um, there is some sort of big bad guy that's being hinted towards in the lore right now. I think that AOS is going to be AOS 3 by eh, probably midsummer. Like I'd say it would have been around Gen Con time. Uh, but yeah, I think we're headed towards uh, end times light here pretty quick, just based off of where the fiction's at. So might be a good time to get involved in Age of Sigmar. Maybe, maybe. That's that's fair. Um, Speaking yeah, of, I, oh, go ahead. I I lost my train of thought. Oh. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things that are signaling the end of times, the Dungeons and Dragons movie isn't coming out until twenty twenty three now, and I'm sad. It was supposed to come out you earlier. People don't wear masks. Well, spit in each other's mouths like gross gross people I, I, I don't think any of our watchers do that but yes people definitely do that i've seen the news 100 percent. people are going out there and they're just swapping spit like i'm not even like like there was a college co like party 
fully hosted to catch corona. And like the thing was you you someone with like a positive diagnosis was standing at the door spitting in people's drinks as they came in. Yeah, that seems dumb. Speaking yeah. of dumb things, I need to spend $150 on another copy of the Silmarillion, and I don't need you to judge me for it. So uh, there is a new collector's edition of the Ooh. Silmarillion that comes out. Uh, I don't need this, but that doesn't change the fact that I really want to spend $150 on a leather-bound copy of the Silmarillion that is illustrated oh, by Ted Naismith, so... Oh man, some of the I yeah yeah this is going on my Christmas list. Yeah, uh, there's only 2,500 of them being printed. They are sold out from uh, the publisher already. So or sorry, not 2,500, 4,000 of them. If you can get a copy, that's super cool. Um, I, it's fine. I still have my first edition Lord of the Rings somewhere. So like, or my parents have them. So it's fine. I don't need to buy. $150 copies is a Silmarillion. Yeah, I do. Who am I kidding? But the other uh, weird thing about this is that we are uh, getting to sort of the post Christopher Tolkien era now. So uh, check this out. I copied the wrong URL, but I'm going to put it in there now. Um, if If I don't just struggle to death. Hang on. Hang on. So we have yeah. clearly hit the post Tolkien era. So in October, there is a book coming out in J.R.R. Tolkien's name that is not edited by anyone in the Tolkien family for the first time, literally ever. Uh, Carl F. Hostetter is going to get to put out a Tolkien book. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, I'm... I, I love mean, Lord of the Rings. Sorry? I mean, I'm going to read it. Yeah, and I love Lord of the Rings, and I haven't been a huge fan of Chris Tolkien publishing his dad's half-finished notes about things. So maybe it'll be cool to have a different voice in this world. And Amazon's got their new show set in the Lord of the Rings uh, post-downfall of Numenor world. Cool. Um, I just... I don't know, man. It It is, I guess, a sign of the times that everything that I love as a child is now being just served at me willy-nilly. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So, in the same vein of the Amazon series, uh, Amazon is also producing uh, Conan the Barbarian series. They also have... What's the other one? It's... Um, uh, Oh, Wheel of Time is also... All of that is supposed to come out in the next 12 months from Amazon. So they have um, a Tolkien Middle Earth, they have Conan the Barbarian, and they have Wheel of Time, which is crazy. Apple is doing the foundation. Yeah, yeah. Just all these things that I've been and reading Dune, since middle Dune school. Coming out soon. Sorry? The new Dune movie is coming out soon. Ah, uh, yes, Dunk. Sorry, yeah. just... The first time I saw the like images of it online, it definitely I read it as Dunk, and so now it's just the Dunk movie. Whenever I see advertising for it, so uh, because they have Jason Momoa, so of course he's all over the posters. Oh no! I'll I Jason Momoa's in that movie. Yeah, Who is Duncan Jason Idaho. Momoa in Dune? He's Duncan Idaho. No. Yeah. In my head, Duncan Idaho does not look like Jason Momoa. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been so dismissive, but like, that's not who I imagine as... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody will sh will just show up and prove me that like... wrong on who he actually is. Isn't uh, he I just Indiana in Jones? Like, he's just Harrison Ford in my mind. Jason Momoa? No, 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 no. Oh. Duncan Idaho. No, Duncan Idaho's. Isn't he's like the ultra soldier guy? Or yeah, the other guy. But in my head, his name is Duncan Idaho, which is basically Indiana Jones, except for like a little bit of a mix-up. Yeah. 
Reading right here, Jason Momoa as Duncan Idaho. Oh, God. All right, well, might be great. Josh Brolin, uh, Gurney. Listen, it can't be weirder than the actual version of Dune that we have right now. The sci-fi TV, like, 2000 one? Oh, it was long before 2000. We're talking about, like, 1980s. Like, we're talking the one with Patrick Stewart in it. Oh, then, like, 1976 one. Yeah. 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 Young Patrick Stewart, who looks exactly the same as current Patrick Stewart. Yes. Uh, speaking of seen, uh... Patrick Stewart. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yeah, Simon put up... Uh, God, it's been 11 days now, but Marvel United X-Men has just... Yeah, you can see the total. It's at uh, $1.8 million. I bring this up. I love X-Men. Like, I, I, I honestly do. In all of its various incarnations, I've always kind of been there for it. I have a real hard time backing games by major publishers on Kickstarter. I really do. Simon doesn't need this money. They don't need this publicity for this game. But I mean, I can agree with you, but at the same time, I also helped Callus Game Labs fund the Clan Invasion box. So. Yeah, I just there's something about major publishers going to Kickstarter to get funded that I have like if they're going to get mad at Zach Braff for being on here for financing a movie. Why is Simon get a pass on it? Like, Simon is the fourth largest uh, publisher of games. Yeah. But also, there are so many minis. So many. So many. N yeah, just there's going to be so... I almost want to buy it, but I'm going to I'm gonna I hold off. For the blob mini. Sorry? I kind of want it just for the blob mini. I want it for all of them, but I also don't think that Simon should be strong doing guy. this. I, remember strong guy. I had the strong guy action figure. The only thing that happened was his arms moved up and down as his head slightly tilted to one side. That, that sounds disappointing in every way imaginable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had no okay. idea who he was until I got the toy. Well, that's fair. I mean, look at how good Apocalypse looks as Chibi Apocalypse. All right. Tell you what, enough. if 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 enough of you say, "Hey, I would watch a series of of choice painting this stuff for me," I I will consider backing this. If if we can get, tell you what, if we can get twenty likes by the end of the week, I will back this and we will paint it on stream. Otherwise, no, no, I'm not doing it. You can't make me. Well, you you could. You could like tie me to my desk and be like paint this or I'll kill you and I'd probably do it at that point but short of that I would not I have standards sort of sometimes okay let's keep painting stuff yeah um so just because we were talking about how weird it is that Jason Momoa is Duncan Idaho Mm -hmm. in the new Dune movie I will read his character description as defined by Wikipedia so take it with a huge grain of salt Okay. but he's described as a handsome man with curling black hair to whom women are easily attracted to okay wait that's the and end that, that, that's, that's his description um, wait he has Paul Atreides notes that Duncan has a dark round face and feline movements the swiftness of reflex that made him uh, such a difficult weapons teacher cool so, that, this sounds yeah. like the Ginny Weasley description all over again want to know about how much they described Ginny Weasley in Harry Potter they didn't They. she is a Weasley so that's it they, they describe her by relating her to the rest of her family. And you're just supposed to construct a character off the... I hate... I don't like Harry Potter. Other people are fine to love Harry Potter. That's on you. But, like, 
Not my, not my bag. Not my bag. All right. So I pulled this guy off of, you can see, uh, once I pulled that giant beard off of him. So you can see our beard, beard face. Um, yeah, you can see how much of this model now that I have way better access to. So uh, I'll stick him to some blue tech and we'll keep going with him. So, uh, and I'll do the same for his, his buddy. So now that I've got sort of general patterns, general areas of light and shadow, I'm going to go through and we're going to add some depth to the shadow. So that's really this step on these ones. I might just swap it to one of them but I like having at least two minis on the go so that I can swap back and forth depending on uh, drying time and stuff, so. I feel like there should be more to Duncan Idaho's character description on Wikipedia, though. That seems there, a little there's, light. There's, there's quite a bit. That was like his physical description. Oh, uh, okay. Well. Um, let's see. For more on him, he's fiercely loyal to House Atreides. We all knew that. Uh, Lady Jessica calls him the admirable fighting man whose abilities at guarding surveillance are so esteemed. Uh, he's a skilled pilot, the swordmaster of Ganaz. Um, he also kills uh, 19 Emperor, uh, uh, 19 Sardaukar before he himself is killed. Which is pretty crazy since those are basically like Dune's version of super soldiers yep I, I really do like the sardaukar they're kind of kind of interesting fair enough are you have you not seen the 2000s made for tv movie miniseries thing from space dune and then its sequel children of dune i have not oh man it is bad but it's so good you know, I kind of got my fill of bad but so good at some point. And I'm, I'm not saying that I will never watch a bad movie ever again, because that's that's just patently false. But um, I don't know. I'd rather rewatch The Office for the 700th time. That doesn't seem better. No, you never watched all of the American Office. I have watched all of the Canadian, or the, not the Canadian, the um, UK British? Office. Yeah, yeah, well, there's only two seasons of it. It's a little easier to get through. Okay, I would rather watch all of TNG again than than watch a a bad sci-fi movie. Like, not saying that it's necessarily bad, but like, you, you did describe it as the worst, so... I feel like I'm not taking liberties too much on that one. Yeah. I still love bad TV or bad TV and bad movies. Well, you did recommend at one point that I watch Supergirl. So your recommendations, not great. Do not yeah, trust. That, that That might be a little fair on that one. Um, oh, I was going to say, I mean, I do you remember the 90s TV show Sequest? Yes. Sequest DSV? It. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. It was great. Uh, I, it was on Netflix like six years ago for a while. And then I was just about done the second season. And then <clears throat> I finished an episode and it was like, oh, yeah, um, here's the next three shows you should watch from like. But the thing says that I've got six episodes left. What was going on? Then I backed out of the menu and went back and it was gone. Oh, that's unfortunate. Like, oh. So you guys can see, uh, just now that I've got them off of that beard, there are also areas that I'm like, oh, I did not paint that. So I'm just going back in. Um, and we are going to, you know, alternate back and forth between base coat base tone and our shadow tone so we'll continue to work up shadows and highlights all across the skin so you know um to give a little bit of a finer point on this uh what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to create 
um, volume. So if we were to reduce this guy's, let's say his arm, his arm is basically a cylinder that goes from his shoulder to his elbow, right? Yeah, I know, Sean, we definitely shouldn't trust him. Um, but on that cylinder, we want to have light come down from above and then reflect up into our eyes. So it would come down this way and reflect up into our eyes, camera, whatever. And you guys can see that that doesn't necessarily, so on this shinier part on the belly where I'm slowly covering it over with less matte paint, um, you can see that it doesn't actually shine on the top and then directly, like, the shine isn't on the top. It is on the point that is closest to your eye. So like pool balls. Let's let's do it this way with this bottle. You can see that light comes down and then reflects off to the side. So if light is coming down this way, it bounces off the surface and then is reflected back away from it, right? But the only light that comes down and hits the surface and is reflected into your eye is the light that is directly pointing at your eye. All that to say, if I highlight just the tops of his muscles, so if I do the classical technique where I just, from the top down, highlight the entire model, right? The Zenithal highlights. That doesn't actually capture really well um, glossy or slick surfaces. So with these guys, I'm not just gonna put paint on the tops of all of these muscle groups, right? Or all of these surfaces. I'm gonna, you know, and the easy way to do this actually is to just throw water on it and look at, you know, from the angle that I would be looking at it while I'm presenting, you know, while I'm looking at this as a judge and note where those shiny spots are. And that's where I wanna put my actual like small specular highlights. I can still have broad highlights on the tops of muscle groups, that looks fine. But when it comes down to where does, how do I make it so it looks like he's sweaty? That's how it happens. I know not of what you speak. Oh. Uh, what is the worst movie that Sean has ever suggested now? Suggesting? Like, not suggested. He owns this movie. What movie is that? I can't remember the name. I can only remember remember a line from the movie that the main character says. And I'm pretty sure most of the budget for this movie went to the guy's massive prosthetic butt chin. Okay. Um, but the line where he, he's just like, he... Someone asks him, if they, to, they're going to get him out of jail because he's got to fight someone and kill him. And he's like, ooh, where, when? Like, just completely overacting it so, so hard. And All right. It is. Uh, I think that was right around where we stopped the movie, at least where I stopped watching the movie. I'm pretty sure Sean's watched it to completion twice. No. Well. Everybody's allowed to love what they love. There are some people who don't love um, um, Bill and Ted. Those people are objectively wrong. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I watched Face the Music with Jamie the, uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah? What'd you think? So good. Yeah. Oh, man. So good. Uh, so the kid who plays um, um, Keanu's daughter is actually Hugo Weaving's daughter, which yeah. is super weird because she does a spot on impression of Keanu Reeves as Theodore Logan. Like it is amazing how good she is at that. That is very true. Like I was, I, I really enjoyed that movie. Um, Sean, what is the name of that movie? You you know it. Now Sean's hiding from you now. You offended him, and now we're down to four viewers. That's because I called Sean out on his lies, and he ran away like a coward. Wow, such violent rhetoric. 
Yeah. Oh, no, he's still there. Sean, don't help him. After after he said those awful things about you? I unconscionable. Said much worse about him to his face. That's really mean, dude. I we mean, used to like randomly push each other into bushes and stuff while we were walking. So uh, no, dude, that's not mean. That's called bushing someone, and it's perfectly acceptable in polite society. Right. You can't bush a friend. Are they even a friend? No, they are not. Uh, like I don't even know what to Google to find out the name of this movie. Um, really bad movie. I don't think that helped. I don't think if you Google really bad movies. Oh, see, he knows exactly what you're talking about. He's just messing with you. You yep. should bush him now. Next time I see him, I will. That, that makes sense. Makes sense. So again, right now on the model, you guys can see I am putting in pretty small areas of color, really. Um, and everything looks streaky and bad. It's fine. We got lots of time to build this into a beautiful masterpiece of glowing awesomeness. So, and really, there is nothing that you can undo with uh, more paint, as long as you keep your paints nice and thin. So, thin your paints. Right. Or don't. I don't know. I'm not in charge of you guys. I don't even know, other than Sean and maybe Adam, if you guys even paint models. Maybe you don't, and you're just hanging out to support us, and I appreciate you. So again, just working up uh, on the palette here. This is just, again, our Arabic skin tone from scale 75. And this is just basic flesh. Uh, we've got a little bit of an Ardan green mixed with Cantabric blue. And then we're using that as a shadow tone for both those colors. Just that's going to be our global shadow on this entire model. Because picking a global shadow tone is a good idea. Because then it actually situates your person in a world. If I could recommend anything, um, if you're watching this in the future or... You're me in the future regretting this advice. Um, pick global highlight and shadow colors and, and make them something interesting. Don't make them black. Black isn't interesting. Don't make them brown. Brown's also not interesting. Make it colorful. Colors are interesting. I mean, brand, brown, granted, can actually be really interesting because just the way color theory works, but choose choose cooler. Do something neater. Because if it's Neat. unusual and pretty, people like it. What's up? Uh, no, I'm just not much. I'm just actually going through now all of the Games Workshop Age of Sigmar start from. It's yeah, I need to know which ones they all what they all come with and which ones I'm going to continually change my mind on about buying, but I'm probably still just going to buy Slaves of the Dark. So, there is a really interesting rule that keeps coming up in the AOS. Um for the Cities of Sigmar actually. Um as they keep adding new order factions, so the Lumineth Realm Lords, uh the um uh, Daughters of Cain, all the rest of it. As they've added them, they've added new cities so you can take them on, right? Yeah. So you can take them as a partial faction. I was talking with other AOS nerds on Vince's stream last night, and uh, there was the interesting idea because you can take one out of every four units as whatever, whatever, right? So one in four can be Stormcast, one in four can be whatever your like basically allied faction is. So it could be Seraphon. Uh, can't actually be Seraphon yet, but it could be um, Daughters of Cain. It could be any of the Order armies, right? 
And, yeah. some, and somebody came up with the idea of being able to do the same thing with Slaves of Darkness because it would make sense that the Chaos uh, United would be able to ally with other Chaos units. So you wouldn't necessarily get like um, corn Demons, but you could probably take like... Um, Marauders. Yeah, or what is Korn's actual human army in AOS? I can not uh, remember the name of it right now. It's uh, Blood something. Blood, yeah. Uh, I was just looking at it. Korn... Uh, Bloodbound. Bloodbound, there we go. Which, yeah, actually, they have some pretty neat models, too. Yeah, they look like they are essentially... Like, one of their units is a replacement for, like, Chaos Marauders. It's unarmored dudes with helmets and big axes. That was that was what Chaos Marauders were in Old Hammer. Uh, there's a really, really cool demon thing in it. Yeah. Um, and actually, the Chaos Lord, the, the corn demon... Or, lord guy is pretty neat he has a horn hound as his little buddy yep everybody has dogs now which is pretty fun uh, i don't know if you've noticed that about age of sigmar yet is that yeah all the That's armies have cool. dog friends yeah I also like everybody that. has dragons and everybody has horsies so yeah that's true Again, so what I'm doing right now on the model is I'm just, this isn't even close to our highlight, like our final highlight, but I am building in smaller spots of specular light so that when we look at it from this direction and you can still see there's some weird striping that I'm gonna sort of smooth out on that shoulder, but you can see that the light looks like it's coming down, bouncing off of, the correct area and out into our eyes that's one of the if i can recommend anything to like me from a year and a half or three years ago like why does my army not look like those dudes on you know instagram that's why it took me forever to figure that out but that's why because i was putting my highlights at the top of the model instead of the light the area that light bounces off to travel to your eye. Anyway. Adam, have have you ever actually played Blood Bowl? Uh, the tabletop version or the video game? Either. Mm, I played Blood Bowl, the video game. And? Uh... I only played like a demo of it. It was pretty fun from what I can remember, but I never actually did end up getting the full game. That's fair. I have played a lot of Blood Bowl 2. Blood Bowl 3 comes out soon, sometime. Hopefully before October. But the, the reason why I ask is because I am not good at Blood Bowl. I was hoping that at some point somebody out there could help me get better at the actual game instead of just at painting the minis for it. Because right now, I'm very bad at the game. And I would like to be better so that I actually better understand sort of the backstory. We, we're doing the same thing on our Tuesday streams. Uh, I like having backstories for all of my models. I don't know. It just helps me remain inspired as I'm staring at it for the 80th straight hour. So if anybody out there has, you know, either a good understanding of how Blood Bowl works or wants to help me get better at the game, I would really appreciate that because I'm bad at the game right now and I would like to be less bad at the game. I don't want to be good. Good is pressure, not good at it. Yeah, I've played for... Um, I, I finished the single player of Blood Bowl 2. 
Yesterday? Yeah. It was yesterday. Okay. So. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a problem learning it through the video game. And I feel like the video game is pretty faithful to the tabletop game. Just based off of how little uh, it explains literally anything to you. I have a feeling that they're like, well, the people who play this game already know the rules. And the only ways I could think of somebody knowing the rules is having played the tabletop game. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's another way. But that seems there's to make sense to me. Way. There is always another way. But that was what made sense to me. So. Oh, Just... uh, after our last stream. Yeah. I actually got the first. 30k Dark Angels book. Oh, nice! Was it sent to me? It's mostly about like life on uh, Caliban or Caliban. Is, is it? Um, whose perspective is it from? Uh, third person right now, but right now it's okay. focusing on Zario. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Zario is the head chaplain. He is the last lord, last recorded Lord Cipher. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Who am I thinking? I'm thinking Belial, aren't I? That's the leader of the Deathwing. Who's the uh, leader of Ravenwing right now? Samael. Samael. Thank you. Goodness. They yeah. all have, the, you know, that sort of name, and I bless them for it, but also it's I, they do not stick well with me. I'll be honest. Reading, reading the names in the in the book, like they have, just like the the old Calibanite names. Yeah, they use a very um, uh, like Middle Eastern naming pattern. Huh. So like, your it would be your first name, then L, your father's name. Yep. And then your, his father, your father's name would be whatever his name was, L, your grandfather's name, and yep. so forth and so on. Yeah, huh. it was, it's, it's it's really neat. It was, I'm getting a little bit more into the Dark Angels now. I'm still not fully sold. I mean, I like them in lore. I don't know if I'd ever. But you uh, get I'll, Terminators, I'll, I'll, Deathwing Terminators, man. Yeah, I'd rather have Wolfguard Terminators, though. Which... Um, Adam and I are right now talking about the lore from the uh, Dark Angels, which is the series that we're running on Tuesdays. Not that there are probably any of you here who don't know that, but sometime in the future, you will be able to join us on whatever Tuesday in the distant future you're watching this, and you can watch us paint probably the same Blood Angel still. Maybe a different one. Probably a different one, but... We'll be painting something. Come and join us on Tuesday, six o'clock mountain, some other time in whichever time zone you're in. Yeah. Or don't, it's up to you. I'm not your mother. I'm your dad. And he's very disappointed. I'm not disappointed. All of you are probably lovely people. Some of you undoubtedly have things that are not great that you don't love about yourself, but you know, as long as you're doing it with consent, it's fine. I love you. You're still a good person. Unless it's robbing banks, in which case, go ahead. Like, fuck it. Banks have money insured. Something that you, as a person, can't do, a bank can. So I'm not saying you should rob a bank, but if you're planning on robbing something, the money in the bank's insured. Yep. But if you do rob a bank, don't hurt anybody. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, don't do violence. Don't do violence. Uh, you can't do violence to property. So go ahead and do all the violence you can against property. I know that that was uh, not a well-constructed sentence or argument, but the sentiment remains. The only thing that separates me from being a rich person is bolt cutters. That's fair. 
right? And if only they would remember that, they'd probably be less of dicks. So I'm continuing to paint Point Break? Adam, you think that Point Break is an awful movie? What? I do not think Point Break is an awful movie. God, it's it, not Point Break. If it is Point Break, the Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze masterpiece. I don't know if I can have you. I don't know if we can continue on with this train. It has point surfers point. in it. C or FBI surfers. Ridiculous. Don't like Point Break. God. I, I love Point Break. I didn't Do even you? mind the remake all that much. There's a the remake? Still, yeah. The original is still far superior. That doesn't seem the remake, necessary. The remake was enjoyable. I watched it once and it was entertaining. I didn't feel like it wasted my time. Why do they remake great movies? Remake crap movies. It's like, why would you remake Total Recall? Total Recall is perfect. Fight me. I love you can Recall, add me. I, also, I you did can... like the whatever that actor's name is, Total Recall. It was pretty good. It was very close to the book. Yeah, you know what isn't close to the book? The Arnold one. The Arnold Schwarzenegger one. The Arnold Schwarzenegger one is nothing like the book, and it is a masterpiece. It has an Austrian man who basically can't speak English yet, and it is phenomenal. There is an alien with three boobies, not saying that that's the most important part of the movie, but it exists. Quaddle is part. gross and great and... Um. What's his name? Michael Ironside is the villain, and it's great. Yep. Um, the way he kills Benny and the one-liner that comes from it is amazing. Right? Um, the way he kills Michael Ironside's character and then the one-liner that comes from that is even better. And then the, the watch one right before that. Listen, if there is one thing that I feel I can live my life by and, and and if it ever comes true i would probably die happy is that i should get my ass to mars of course i should get my ass to mars sean i think we're back on high latency for whatever reason this stream because he doesn't yeah. hate point break no i don't hate point break nobody hates point break some people might not like well, point break I those people Jamie are wrong. Watching. I'm going to make Jamie watch Point Break, the original one. Why? Oh, as in, not as in why are you forcing her to watch it? My exclamation of why is why hasn't she already watched it? It has young Swayze in it. And young Keanu. I mean, young Keanu is, is cute, but like young Swayze is special. It is... I mean, he still does have like the like the the wavy blonde mullet in it. Yeah, it is pre ghost. And oh, you know what they um, what Arnold movie they added to Netflix recently is True Lies. And again, another perfect movie. Yeah, right. True Lies. You're fired. Do you know <laughs> the locks? Uh, um, uh, yeah, I picked Sam. Snaps his neck. Gives him sodium pentothal, and then Jamie Lee Curtis starts interrogating him. So good. <laughs> Such a great movie. Have you I... killed anybody? Yeah, but they were all bad people. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's another? Uh, I mean, Conan the Barbarian. That movie is. That so movie good. is I mean, great. And again, I can't believe not, that Amazon gets to remake all these movies, which yeah. is both great and sort of like, do you need That's to? Bad. Although from what I understand of the Amazon remake that they're doing, um, it is meant to be uh, more than just the, the young Conan story. Like it is pulling from all of the books as opposed to 
just the first two, I think, that are in the Arnie Conan movie? Um... Yeah, I'm more familiar with the Conan comics. That's fair. Um, you should. Go I do with... have the, I do have the reissues of. I have the first eight reissues, like big, like graphic novel format reissues of them. Yep. Um. So it has the. The intro of Young Conan, where he like leaves Samaria, um, and then he fights the Ace Ace here. The, the frost giants yep um and then he becomes a pirate after that for a bit and that's where he first encounters the servants of the snake god um it's been a while since i've actually read those i need, i don't even they are on my comic shelf i can see them i have to read them soon that's fair um, so i just, I didn't like the Jason Momoa one. That was bad. There was a Jason Momoa Conan movie? Yeah, it's called Conan the Barbarian. Did it come out um, at the same time as the Rock Hercules movie? Roughly around the same time. Okay. Um, the one thing I will say for the Jason Momoa one, Jason Momoa looks more like Conan supposed to in that movie. Yeah, he's supposed to be Sumerian, which... Objectively, Jason Momoa is not, but, like, I guess. That's not the one I want. That's the one I want. Okay, so, I've sort of got... I'm, I've, I've isolated work onto this one shoulder, and you can see it's still a little rough, but we're getting closer. Um, I'm going to come in now and do some of the larger block work on this shoulder. Um, I'm pretty happy with where these highlights are. They might get some glinting stuff. Uh, and I'm going to finish up this little arm area and his trap there. So I'm just moving up in color now. We're going to go to light skin and we're going to mix that into the basic flesh. And then to do some of the final, like, make him look like he's sweaty bits, uh, we're going to be probably moving into light sand. Light what? sand. What's so, what's so, it's so bad. Are you talking about... Total Recall? Or are you no, talking, about, talking Conan? about the Conan remake? The, the Jason Momoa Conan. Oh. Jason Momoa Conan remake. I, yeah, again, I don't know how I feel about that. It could be great. Wouldn't no, it? It's not. Like, no. The best part about it is the fact that like Jason Momoa makes a really good Conan and it was a really good casting choice. And the movie the movie has so much. It's, the movie is disappointing because you can see the potential in the movie but it was edited very poorly, so there's no plot. The scenes don't really make sense. There's no flow between them. It's Yeah, but it's, that's, that's also the feeling of the novels, like for the novelization, because it is pulp, right? Like it's just yeah. episodic weirdness. Um, everything that's come to Conan after and I'm gonna, it starts with an H and I'm forgetting the author's name and I feel kind of bad about that. It'll come to me in 10 minutes when it's no longer useful. But um, yeah, it's just like episodic pulp. So I don't know, I could see that working as not really having connecting plot tissue for everything. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, probably am. So you can see, even though I've started to put this lighter skin tone towards the top, still using really thin down shadow color here. So this is just the Arabic shadow. Then I'm going to take it down a little bit more just as we get towards this unlit part of the muscle with our shadow tone. And then I'll build it back up again because that's what we do. That's how we get nice soft blends because skin, and this is true of all human-ish skin tones, uh, dwarfish in this case. Um, we have lots of pretty soft curves in our skin. Uh, we don't generally have lots of hard jagged edges that require, you know, precise painting, which is part of why I like skin so much, uh, or painting skin. Like I don't want to wear skin other than like my own. 
I'm sounding more like a serial killer literally every second of this stream. Um, I like painting the organic shapes of skin. No, that doesn't sound better. Adam, save me. <laughs> um. See, right now, I am actually looking at... Hey, guess what? Another Age of Sigmar starter. Which one? Uh, the Fire Slayers. I like the idea of the Fire Slayers having, like, basically, um... Oh, what are they called in D&D? Now I lost the thread on it. Um, Azers? Is it Azers that are the dwarfs from the Plane of Fire? Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I like the idea of those. They kind of look like giant naked babies, though. They are giant naked babies with beards. Right? That's not, that's not a great thing to be. Like... There are worse things you could be. You could be Mitch McConnell. But, like, not a great thing to be a giant naked baby on fire in a battle, though. Like, that seems... That seems counterproductive. A little bit? I'm not... I'm not... I don't really know much of the... What Age of Sigmar Slayer lore is now. Uh, I am familiar, pretty familiar with the old... Um, a uh, old hammer slayer lore. Oh yeah, so these guys are, um, the fire slayers were actually one of the newest armies, or the first army, sorry, introduced when uh, the old world died. So they were one of the first ones that uh, everybody found when they went to Azir, when Sigmar was like, "I'm in charge now," but they are not. Um, they don't have anything to do with the Duradin of the old world. They are a new thing, but they are very much a continuation of the dwarf slayer barbarian tradition, you know, yeah. that's pretty popular in fiction. So, and then they gave them a fiery aesthetic, which was cool. And then they've released one model since AOS one and the initial release of fire slayer stuff, which is kind of sad because they're pretty cool looking. They're pretty cool looking for a bunch of flame-haired naked babies. Yeah, like if I was if I was to rate them on how well they represent flamey-haired naked babies, they'd be like an 8 out of 10. Now, why I would want the... to break something on that scale, I'm not entirely sure, but I would. I'm looking at the, the Daughters of Cain box, and I really want the Cain miniature. Oh, I really like Marathi, which is their giant monster slash. She's now a god, like on the scale of um, Teclas and um, Nagash. Okay. Yeah. Um, Marathi. Oh yeah, I'm here. I'm looking. I just found her. <laughs> oh yeah. Giant snake lady. Yeah. But she. Um, yeah, she's real powerful, as I said, like on the scale of Nagash and Teclas now, because she founded an entire mortal realm now. Uh, also, all of her half snake ladies, those are all uh, elves that were yeah. like, no, we're kind of we're kind of done with everybody else. This was what people thought was going to happen to the Dark Elves, but it turns out that it the Dark Elves are still out there being imprisoned. Some of them, most of them, are out there being imprisoned by Slanesh still. So, Slanesh yeah. is free, by the way, uh, in AOS, but the oh. Elf Souls are still... Slanesh has got them, because Slanesh got a Slanesh. You know what's kind of sad? I want what's the that? Daughters of Cain box set purely just for the like the cane mm. the avatar of cane miniature it's the only one in the box that doesn't come sold separately um you can get it in the blood sacrifice carriage thing you can get an avatar of cane separately but it is still a like 120 dollar kit so yeah it's a 90 dollar kit so yeah be, like that comes in the, the starter box. Yeah. 
I mean, the starter box is, is only $20 more. Yeah. So it's one of those things. Uh, you can get some wicked snake ladies, too. Just have some snacks. I mean, out of all of the the armies in Age of Sigmar, totally, like all of them right now, I gotta say that the Slanesh demonettes, like, well, the whole Slanesh army is, is really cool looking for being an army. Like, I can understand how people would fall to them, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, they, they, they look neat. And by neat, I mean terrifying, hermaphroditic, pleasure-seeking weirdos, but like... Neat. Neat. Listen, I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't let me join their band. They'd just hang me up by my thumbs and whip me for their own pleasure until I died, so... That is... That is true. They would just... Well, that's just weird. Slanesh is the god of, of pleasure, which is why the elves made him with their worship of pleasure until they were like, oh no, this is bad. Oh god. Oh no, not that god. Yeah, I love that. Oh, how, how was Slanesh born in 40k? Um, the elves did a. The elves did the nasty the so good that they made a god out of it. Yeah. Yeah, and like caused the warp storms that destroyed the human empire uh not just the human empire it also like plugged the web wave and stuff too like it was a real catastrophe yeah why are all 40k eldar all straight edge kids that is why yep listen i'm not gonna knock on straight edge kids but also yep yeah, like I have, there's nothing wrong with being straight edge. It's totally fine. That is just 40k's version of straight edge kids. Is, oh uh, yeah, they they learned their lesson, I guess. I don't know. There's a lot of like Catholic guilt that comes, or well, Protestant guilt, or small c Catholic guilt that comes in Games Workshops game design sometimes. So I don't know. They teach their own, I guess, but like. So I might reorient this model just to finish off the side here, but we'll see in a minute or two. Just, I'm having a, a time getting access to some of the parts of the model that I want. So we might change up how he's Happy. oriented in his orange tack, blue tack, orange, blue tack. His, his tack? His tack, yeah. Listen, I don't know. It's, I know it's orange, but like most people, yeah. Yeah, most people would know the substance by its brand name, Blue Tank. I don't know. Just gonna keep building up highlight. Again, you can see it looks a little rough. That's perfectly fine. What we're trying to do right now is build some texture, not texture into the skin. We're trying to, portray nice smooth skin, but we're trying to portray a sweaty boy. So part of the portrayal of the sweaty boy is that we need to get some pretty extreme highlights going on because, well, we can demonstrate it here in a second on a different part of this model, but light reflects differently off of matte surfaces, which is what the skin's never really matte, but it is sort of, um, you, you range from semi-gloss to like truly like a really sweaty person is quite a glossy surface so yeah i think the i think of the glossy girl flesh on that obliterator model from tuesday yeah well that guy wasn't so much sweaty as he was uh covered in sores warped by chaos to be disgusting but yeah, um, I'll just take two seconds here and I'll show you. So if we take a very matte surface, the the reverb learning in this case. Uh, so he is covered in a very, very matte paint. You can see how the light is defined. 
It is very broadly spread across the entire blue, green, black shoulder pad here. When I put water on it, so I've got a very glossy surface on here until it dries, you can actually see both of my lights in the reflection. Like you can see individual light sources and there is way more dark color around it, right? So you can see, if we go over to his other, there's a very diffuse light versus glossy surface, very concentrated, high highlights of reflection. This, it doesn't get nearly as bright. That's all that we're doing. So to make something look glossy, we need to get to that very high highlight of surface. Um, and we need to keep it fairly small. Brush control is a huge part of this, but also um, I can paint something 4,000 times, like 4,000 semi-transparent layers of paint are gonna get me to maximum brightness, but also let me keep smooth edges around it. So that's what we do. Cause we can get to this max brightness and then we can smooth it back into the rest of the paints that surrounds it. So we're just gonna get to that spot in a couple of areas on him. Then I'm gonna turn this model around and sort of finish up other bits. Oh boy. So if you were starting AOS right now, Adam, what would you want to start with? How would you approach starting AOS right now, I guess is, or in this case, um, Age of Sigmar? How would you start playing Age of Sigmar? What would your choices be to get to an army? Uh, to get to an army, so let's go, because I've been fixating kind of on the slaves to darkness a little bit more because I was a huge fan of the old hammer, uh, chaos warriors like mm -hmm. i just love their aesthetic of like giant burly barbarian dudes who are like hey you know cover me in heavy plate armor and give me a sword yeah um so i'd probably start with that one uh so you're going to come at it from the perspective of aesthetics like you want to you want an army that looks cool to you yeah i like as much as I, you know, my main reason for not doing a Chaos Space Marine army for, uh, or a kill team is because they're, they're just bad. We've, we've, you and I have each tried twice. With yeah, I Chaos can't get Space CSM Marine. to work. Like it's... No, it, like I, I tried. It's my most effective one was Corn, and they didn't play the objective. They just murdered. Yeah, which is a good way which to guess, lose a Games Workshop game. Yeah, yeah, and like the only way, the only reason I, I didn't know I didn't even win. I just killed more models. I wasn't able to table you. Nope, that was your only hope with corn berserkers was to table me, and I took that away from you pretty quickly by just running away. Although you to did. be fair, I did win with at least once with Nurgle Marines, but that's not really chaos. That is Death Guard. Yeah, this is... I mean, they are technically Chaos Space Marines, but they are, like, rules-wise, in Kill Team, um, like a separate faction. They use different keywords and whatnot. Yep. Um, Yeah, like, you know, so if I got that, I would probably get the, the starter box. Um, let's see, I'm just kind of going through... I do like Dark... The, the Dark Oath Chieftain. Mm -hmm. uh, still a fan of the old Chaos Lord on foot with the big glaive. Always like that. So you're looking uh, mostly for an army aesthetic though, right? Yeah. Yeah. If I want to keep the kind of Chaos Warrior aesthetic, um, you know, I'd, pr I'd probably grab a box of Chaos Chosen. Uh, because they are the Chaos Warriors with great weapons. Yeah. Um, for some reason, there's a Soul Grinder, which is a 40k mini. Nope, it's both. Oh, the Soul Grinder gets summoned into Age of Sigmar out of... Um, like, it's, it's a summon spirit. Yeah. So, 
but okay. the summon roll for it is ridiculous or you can pay for it in points so it's also oh. your um behemoth other yeah. than like new bellicor which also you could run bellicor you don't you can run chaos demons alongside just like you can run Archaeon as a part of uh um, Slaves to Darkness. Slaves to Darkness. Yeah, thank you. I really like Archaeon's new mini. Uh, it's yeah, I'd probably giant. Grab the, yeah, I would probably grab the Gorgresh uh, variants as well. Yep. They look real cool. Uh, like maybe eventually, like uh, you know, Archaeon, but he's he wouldn't be. A prior, just because he's very large and also very expensive. Yeah, no, that's fair. He is both. Uh, like, of there's those one, things. like, I would probably grab another box of the new Chaos Warriors. Um, I apologize. That is my dog losing his mind. Losing which is it? That's Apollo. That's Apollo. I have yeah, two awesome. Shiba Inus. One of them's name is Apollo. Sorry, my head was definitely on the stream there. Um, they're Apollo and Artemis. Artemis is the older of my babies. She is two. Artemis is your younger brother. He is just about six months now, actually. So that's neat. Buddy, I need to pee. I feel like we should go for a break. And then when we come back from that break, there is something mm -hmm. we need to do. I there is and the timer like there's like 35 seconds left on the timer for when that that hits neat i'm so good yeah. at this okay so we will we will we be will, back in yeah five then we can i'm just gonna yell every time i hear you speaking just to see if, how long i can keep this going now i am setting aside my personal desires and needs so i can be an ass on stream i'm I apologize. So I can be a butt on stream. Yeah. We'll be back in five minutes. Go for a bathroom break, everybody.
Yep, I'm back. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, just go all armies of chaos. You'll find it eventually. Oh, it's not the old ones anymore. I promise. All right, we're going live. Switch to... All right, and we're back. Yep. I feel a little bad for blaming Apollo there. It definitely wasn't Apollo. He was being a good boy and snoozling out, outside of the door of my little office here. So that was the neighbor dog that was borking so loud. It was on stream. So yeah, that's fun. He's, she's also a good boy. She's just very vocal, very vocal. Yes, yes, she is. <clears throat> now is a good time for me to remind everybody, uh, like, subscribe, share the channel, tell your friends or your enemies, you know, lie to them. Tell them that I'm giving away a million dollars or something. I don't know. Uh, just as a reminder, we are doing a giveaway when we hit 100, uh, sorry, 100 subscribers. I'm going to do a giveaway for a bunch of Choice Minis gear. We've got stickers that we're going to be giving away, as well as a $25 gift card. The only thing that you have to do to be entered into the draw is be a subscriber. That's literally it. So if you know of anybody that might want some stickers and like $25 worth of gear from Games Workshop, let me, you know, tell them to like the stream. They don't have to watch. They just have to subscribe and then ignore us forever. But when we get to that 100 subscriber mark, we will be doing giveaway. So that is the first one. Still working on skin tone. Many. Yeah, first one of many. Um, I'm going to actually swap brushes now for the first time. Uh, we're going to go to uh, my number zero instead of the number one and just finish off a little bit of the transitions on the front side of the model and the front side of that shoulder, really. And then we'll uh, swap orientation a little bit and work on the back side a little bit more. That is true, but it's also time for a contest of champions. Oh, a contest of champions. So now it is time for as Adam said, a contest of champions. The rules of this segment are each of us, Adam and I, nominate a champion from any place or time in history or fiction, and they protect our honor. How do they defend our honor, you ask? Well, audience, that's up to you. In the comments below or in chat right now, you can add what you think would be a cool contest for our champions to face off in. Now, there are a couple of wrinkles to this contest. Whichever champion goes or wins goes on to the next week. Whoever loses will be replaced by a new champion chosen by the loser. Um, the contests take place with Pokemon rules. They come out into existence from nowhere and don't spend like 20 minutes freaking out because they, you know, don't know the world they're in. They just Come on out and start fire blasting everybody. Now, this week, we have the following contests for our champions to duel in. The first, a shapeless, timeless void of neutral buoyancy where there is an inexplicable light that illuminates visible things, but otherwise nothing. Contest is to the death. What's our next one, Adam? Next one here is scarcely narrow inexplicably lacking in handrails or basically any safety features bridge over top a chasm that reaches into the very roots of the world it's a king of the hill battle you have to hold the bridge we have for the next one transport and assemble a king-sized ikea mound bed 
frame and mattress with the champion significant other the contest is who can do it fastest and without causing a fight with their significant other and after that we have the one that i'm pretty sure is the only one triples can actually win oh no Contest. we have one that we replaced it with so oh yeah yeah this week we have a race around the world in 1873 first to arrive back in london becomes the champion you're being followed around by media so you can't just like you can't just fake it. You can't go like around the corner and like hide for a month and then be like, here I am, I've won. What's the next one, Adam? The next one uh, is out survive the other champion while being chased by Jason Voorhees in the abandoned summer camp, Camp Crystal Lake from Friday the 13th. I do have to correct this. He's actually the killer in the second Friday the 13th. The first one is his mom. Is it? Yeah, in Friday the 13th, uh, the, the first one, it's his mom. Yeah. Tells you how often I watch the Friday the 13th movies. And the final possible uh, contest for our champions is to amass a million dollars in total wealth as fast as possible while in the current economic conditions of reality in 2021, starting only with the materials found in their normal gear. Now, last week, Adam's Tribbles became our inaugural winner in the contest of champions, so they are returning this week. They will be facing the greatest champion of all time, the most British of Frenchmen, and the man who first made me realize that maybe male pattern baldness could be sexy. Adam, prepare your Tribbles to face off against Jean-Luc Picard! Oh, oh man all right okay this is so, gonna be a good one yeah yeah so now that we both decided on who our champions is we're gonna roll a d6 and see what the contest is adam are you ready i am super ready also i'm sorry for exploding all your eardrums all right the Tribbles will be doing battle with Jean-Luc Picard. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose again. <laughs> On a precariously narrow, inexplicably lacking in handrails or basic safety features, Dwarven Bridge built across a chasm over top an endless tunnel. God, the battle is king of the hill. You have to hold the bridge. Oh boy, okay. Well, all right. So the Tribbles literally just start like licking dust off the bridge and multiplying because oh God. it doesn't actually say what Tribbles eat. They just eat anything and multiply. So by now, there's probably at least 30 or 40 Tribbles on there. Okay. Uh, Jean-Luc is going to tap his communicator and inform the Enterprise D computer to fire photon torpedoes on his position as he tries to run off the bridge. <laughs> Can't hold the bridge if there isn't a bridge. <laughs> hey, that is this... my sneaking strategy in D&D. No one can set the alarm off if no one is left alive to set the alarm off. Right? Um... Uh... Um, that, that is really, really good. But I mean, by the time the Enterprise is done, that they also have to shoot through a mountain first to get to the chamber. Number one, fire all torpedoes and uh, phasers on my position. Right? He can do that. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, have O'Brien lock on to whatever that life form is and just teleport it into space. Just use the transporter, transport them all into the void of space as fast as possible, Lieutenant O'Brien. See, I think because like because of how fast tribbles multiply, and like we were going off last time, one tribble makes ten tribbles. Yeah. Um. Um. So. Like, I think the amount of Tribbles would probably overload the Enterprise's transporters. Oh, yeah. Shut them down and probably cause a system-wide overload. Because somehow Tribbles... Tribbles are like Star Trek gremlins. And also, Sean is right. He did suggest a champion 
to me for you to beat Tribbles, and I will tell it to you if you lose. Just being those things like seven feet. Yeah. Oh, hmm. See, I feel like at some oh. point in time, the Tribbles would out eat the structural integrity of our sh inexplicably old dwarven bridge, right? Like at some point they would have to eat so much matter to continue reproducing that they would eat the bridge from beneath themselves, right? Yeah, like kind of like it would it would eat it up from like the center, sure, but they'd also be spreading to both sides of the bridge because to hold the bridge, they're going to hold the whole bridge. So this even if true. they like keep eating the ends, there's still going to be tribbles on top eating like I don't know what to call the beginning of bridges over chasms. Abutment? Abutments. Yeah. Yeah, I and feel... I mean, to be fair, if jean luc doesn't move, the Tribbles will probably eat him. They don't actually eat uh, McCoy, though. Oh, yeah, they yeah, they don't... Oh, there is something weird about Tribbles and not eating, like, actual live stuff. Yeah. Aside from, like, plants. In the meantime, I feel like Jean-Luc could get the Enterprise to, like, fire all phasers, right? And that would, you know, between the Chief O'Brien, um, yeah, well, and that's Jordy. also true. The Tribbles would push each other off the bridge. Um, thank you, Sean. Yeah, but they'd also force Jean-Luc off the bridge as well, though. Fair enough, but I feel like we could recover the bridge with, like, you know what? I'm going to force Jordy LaForge to make some sort of techno babble that allows me to use the deflector dish to, like, reverse the ionization of their DNA so they can no longer reproduce. Basically, I'm going to shoot them with gamma rays until they're all... Um, sterile that would would that not also be breaking the prime directive oh crap the prime directive the prime directive <laughs> the least well-defined uh thing in all of star trek yes oh god but like um okay let's see what else john Luke could not justify sterilizing an entire growing community of innocent beings to anyone no i feel like, like he actually could because yeah. remember they killed those little like um the weird insect things that take over starfleet nobody says anything about the prime directive then and they're about to eat like a starfleet officer he doesn't know they're not going to eat him And also, sure, but like, they're know, destroying he'd, he'd, he'd a priceless... Sorry? He'd, he'd fall down on the bridge, and then he'd get swarmed by them. But then he'd, he'd be like, oh, they're eating... Well, never mind, they're just cuddling me? And purring? And then he'd play, like, jazz flute? He wouldn't play jazz flute. No, no Jean-Luc play... Picard, not like... Or he'd, he'd, he'd play, like, something classical. Also... Let's let's be fair to Jean Luc in this particular situation. Um, Jean Luc has the powers of the Enterprise D because he commands the Enterprise, and the Enterprise A manages to get rid of the Tribbles. The a tribbles is three letters Enterprise. worse than C or than D. <laughs> this is true. Um... So I feel like even though I, I can't so, articulate how the crew of the Enterprise would fix this situation, I very much feel like they would know how to. Yeah, but like there, I, I, yeah, that is fair. Like there is enough brains on there, and you know, Guinan would have some weird solution, or Data would just be like. Captain, why don't we do that thing that they did on the Enterprise A and documented in seen Starfleet the already? On the last one, we're on the Enterprise. Sorry, these Tribbles are in a cavern under a mountain on a bridge. Yeah, but, but also they know that they have to protect this priceless artifact of that civilization, yeah, but, right? Yes, 
But your solution to save the priceless artifact is to bomb it from orbit. My solution is to sterilize all the tribbles and then individually have the like 2,000 crew members on board the Enterprise D transport down to the planet and kick them off of the bridge one at a time. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Jean-Luc is saving this ar this archaeological artifact. Okay. I mean, he's, he's an archaeologist, archaeologist, I, I, archaeologist. I need to go back to the, the whole sterilization thing on here, because I still don't think John luc could justify doing that. And I get your thing about the weird things that took over Starfleet, but the Tribbles aren't a threat to Starfleet. They They're absolutely are. They almost destroyed the Enterprise A, and that would be documented. If they ran into them again, they'd be like, oh, these are Tribbles. It was real bad times last time. Let's murder them. I mean, I'm pretty sure in Star Trek canon, Tribbles are actually like a banned commodity. Like, you can't transport Tribbles. Yeah, exactly. I feel like they would be aware of this situation. And if they weren't, Lieutenant Commander Data would be like, this is the situation. Remember when we tried to appease the like blob of sentient life and it ate Tasha Yar? And then they'd all be like, oh yeah, we, we forgot about that briefly. But we yes. remember now, let's murder. Okay, I'm not really, yeah, but like the triples, like their, their only thing is just eating and breeding. They don't have much else to them. I mean, like, oh, I mean, if we were to simplify them. most sentient life forms life, it's pretty much eating and breeding, so. Yeah, I mean, Tribbles are also cute and fuzzy, and they, like, vibrate and purr. Yeah, that's all fair, except for a different Enterprise crew has already described them as, like, a threat to the Enterprise. Granted, I feel like at some point in time, most of the Academy would be like, hey, all the things that you heard from uh, Admiral Kirk, don't believe them. The dude, yeah. not a not a great dude. Like, don't, don't, don't take his word for it. Let's all listen to Spock, who's standing yeah. right over there and has a more accurate interpretation of these things. I, but I feel like, you know, Starfleet Academy would go off of, you know, Kirk's memoirs or whatever and then people are like oh you know he's he over exaggerates everything Tribbles aren't really that bad they're not a threat to the Federation and because you know they're also like that's the only time they're ever encountered on screen they on screen maybe times. but like if there is a ban against transporting them I feel like it's because people have like gotten into the situation where they broke containment and started to eat everything Beam guys yeah, onto I mean, each side of the step phrases phasers is done. Right, right. There you go. We could just stand there with phasers on stun for like a week. Worf could stand there with every member of the Enterprise, hand them a phaser and be like, and when your arm gets tired, like hand it to the next guy and they can continue stunning. I guess we should have put a time limit on how long they needed to hold the bridge. Yeah. That makes it a little tricky because they're holding the bridge for an indeterminate amount of time. I mean, and eventually like, uh, Picard dies. And the Tribbles just keep eating and breeding to the point where they begin consuming themselves. Yeah. Or they well, eat themselves to the center of the planet. I mean, they're no longer holding the bridge at that point. I guess if the bridge doesn't because exist, they're not they're really holding it. We're rapidly approaching, sorry, we're rapidly approaching the part of this model where I feel like I'm, I'm doing too much. And that's normally a good sign for me to start working on another section of the model. So where I, where I'm no longer happy with how blending is going, that's normally a signal for me as a like painter and modeler and whatnot that is time to move things around. So I'm gonna just continue working on this little bit of the arm here as it goes into his gauntlet and then we'll, we'll swap this all over. 
and start working at it from the other direction. Okay. I feel like at some point, Jean-Luc would have the savvy to, in one way or another, deal with the triple threat. We can both agree that Kirk, not the smartest cookie in the jar, right? Oh, absolutely not. Jean-Luc Picard, significantly smarter than James D. Kirk, yes? Uh, arguably Jean-Luc Picard, greatest captain the Federation has ever seen. It's not arguably, he absolutely is, bar none. But, yes. but, I feel that while I may not be able to come up with the appropriate techno babble that makes a solution for this based off of the magical deflector dish being able to do the magical things that the deflector dish sometimes does. But at some point in time, Jordy, Wesley, and Data come up with a solution that doesn't violate the Prime Directive, but also sterilizes all of the Tribbles. And at that point, it becomes trivial to get rid of them because you just sweep them off the bridge or teleport them to a safer area or transport them, not teleport, transport them to a safer area. Yeah, you know what? Like, I, I'm, I am going to concede, like, the, with the power of the Enterprise D and its 2,000-member crew, I do not think... Tribbles can beat Jean-Luc Picard. Does that mean I won? You just I was, won. I was ready to give up. Th that was my last plead. Well, like, cause like at that, like you described it as like you sterilize the Tribbles. Yeah. So they can't, they can't keep breeding. But I mean, okay. Before I fully concede. Yeah. How long does it take you to do that? Uh, less than forty-four minutes. The length of an average Star Trek episode? <laughs> okay, so in 44 minutes, how fast do Tribbles, like, gestate? I'm going, based off of, like, that logic, yeah, you know, in 22 minutes, they almost took over the Enterprise A. Okay, so in 45 minutes, there would be, like, a million Tribble in that cavern. Yeah. At that point, no, the Prime Director still wouldn't let them do it. They'd be wiping out an entire civilization of beings. But it's a documented civilization that they know about that is yeah, a threat still... to the Federation. They're allowed to fire on the Romulans. I mean, they're not... Like, I can't, I can't take the, the Tribble as a legitimate threat to the Federation. They're like... They almost took over its flagship. Yeah. Until the Excelsior like, became its flagship, but like Yeah. Like arguably by one of like the captain who just kind of winged it and got lucky a whole bunch. Yeah, but he's still a hero of the Federation. Like, regardless of the like rapey vibes that come off of him that definitely exist and should preclude him from being a captain. Um I mean, if anything, yeah, there, there's one species we have never. Well, oh, my other option have... today was the Borg. You yeah, have to say, like, the Borg wouldn't would never bother with Tribbles. Why wouldn't they? If they could rapidly breed biological material for themselves and consume literally anything to create energy, that's a pretty unique biological and technological situation to add into the collective. Uh, now, okay, the collective would true. win because they would before, just keep throwing been... drones at them forever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, Steve, you didn't take the Borg. No, I did not. Uh, someone in the... Okay. We're saying that Data, Jordy, and Wesley come up with a plan to sterilize the Tribbles. Yes. Dr. Crusher, Indiana Troy, and Guinan stop that because they cannot 
allow them to sterilize harmless creatures that are cute and fuzzy. And then, while they're all around the desk, the situation room, they're all sitting there and they're having this argument and Jean-Luc stands up, pulls down the front of his tunic and says, damn them. And like, to hell with your whatever. They nearly took over the Enterprise and I won't allow that again, except for more eloquently and definitely actually British slash French. Um, and then he does whatever he wanted to do anyway. I mean, he does it with the Borg in first yeah, contact he's like to hell with the prime direct or with starfleet's rules i mean and, they broke starfleet's rules the moment they went back in time oh they they break the prime directive literally every time they feel like it they're like meh prime directive every time they bring up like, the prime, prime in an episode, boring sorry every time they bring up the prime directive in an episode it's guaranteed to be broken by the end of the episode oh yes Yes, very much. Like I still, so. I still can't see the crew of the Enterprise. Because the Enterprise you're looking at it as if they're just, as if they're just cute animals. They're not, and they know they're not. As soon as they the Enterprise crew animals. figures out that they're being mind controlled by the stupid game, as soon as Wesley's like, that game is controlling your mind. They all like go what, and immediately start to help. As soon as somebody identifies a threat. Even Wesley Crusher, they're like, oh, no, that's a threat. Let's just deal with it. They're men and women of action. Okay. Though, if Jean-Luc was in the room, before Wesley could finish his sentence, he would tell him to shut up. Agreed. Also, apparently, if you yell that at Will Wheaton, he gets real mad. Yeah, uh, he actually asks to be uh, for it not to happen, and uh, Patrick Stewart then commented, "Shut up, Will." <laughs> oh, the internet! I love you so yeah. much. Yeah, okay. I, I, like this is I, I, I don't want to concede, but like all I've got is that like I don't think the crew of the Enterprise could commit literal like. I'm not wiping out the entire race. I am wiping out a localized colony of a well-known space pest. Basically, I'm putting them on pest control duty. I take your uh, silence as concession. I win. Yeah, yeah. I like I I. My only thing is like I I don't think they. The crew would sterilize them. Again, read the rules. We're in Pokemon rules. They obey what I tell them to, to do. Okay, fine. They don't sterilize yes, them. True. They temporarily sterilize them using the tractor, the deflector dish. Yeah, actually, that is viable because they'd be like, "Oh, we can't." They'd be like, "We'll sterilize," and then Doctor Crush would be like, "Oh, that you know, that's super cruel to sterilize them forever." Uh, and then somehow Data would be like, oh, you know, we could tweak the deflector disc with neutrinos and antiprotons and it would 45 minutes. As soon as that's... it's over, they would re be able to return to breeding as normal. Yeah, they, then, then John Luke would just like, Data, beat me a snow shovel and just like push them all to one end of the bridge and then stand there. Yeah, yeah, you've got this one, Steve. You as he stands there sipping Earl Grey tea, hot. All right. So, we oh, have... we're going with the new one, Earl Grey tea, decaf, hot. That's true. I haven't watched Picard yet, and I know I should because I will enjoy it. But purchasing I'm... more streaming services makes me angry. No, that is fair. Like Crave which is the only streaming service that has Picard as a whole is not very much, not very worth it. That's, that's unfortunate. Um, I, uh, and, and it's, uh, the unfortunate thing is like base crave isn't worth it. It gets more worth it when you add on the extra packages, but those are each like 25, 20 to 25 bucks. Yeah. And that's for those so, not um, in Canada. Yeah. Crave is how we get HBO because we can't have nice things in Canada. And stars 
and stars and um what else is not base package i can't remember you can actually get stars through amazon prime though yes yeah and it's like hbo $3. max is the only one that you can't get any other way yeah which is unfortunate because um i'm unwilling to steal uh tv which makes me a bad pirate but i hope uh makes up for the enormous amount of piracy i did as a youth so yes just, and i've just already an thought, overwhelming of my thought of my champion for next week it is gonna be great excellent well if you guys want to decide a new arena battle so now we have precluded the bridge of Kazadoom is being selected so we have an opening if you want to put a new contest of champions in chat or in the description if you're watching the video later um go ahead throw it in there you might be selected for the next contest of champions or your arena might we will be returning next week on thursday at six o'clock p.m with captain jean-luc picard as the champion so uh again throw it in the description put it in the chat email it to me send up a smoke signal but like do the other things first and then the smoke signal because i won't i don't know where you live i can't see your smoke signals and even if i do know where you live i have no idea how to read a smoke signal so maybe just don't do the smoke signal thing at any rate chat go for it tell us what the next contest of champions should be all right let's flip this guy over yeah let's flip him it's not perfect but it is a thing i'm i'm tired of looking at him from that particular angle for right now so we'll we'll continue on in another part here oh boy I'm excited for Jean-Luc 2 to return in next yep. week's contest of champions. I'm, a, I'm I'm excited to see what you come up with as well. Oh, it's going to be great. And it is. It will spark a debate to shake all nerddom. Ooh. Well, if there is no other reason to bring your nerdy friends into our stream, now you have one. Come and see the debate that will... Shake Nerdum. Shake it to its very foundations. It will. It, it has been, like, I swear, since the creation of fandoms, the biggest argument. Ooh. Can I take a guess? Yes. Is it Captain Kirk? No. Good. Excellent. I'm much happier no, now. because I was going to say, that is the worst debate, because... All of our contests, Jean-Luc would win. At least the ones that exist on the list right now. Like, unless it involves betting an alien lady or getting exceptionally lucky or using Spock to actually win. Also, I kind of want to see Spock and Kirk assemble a bed. Oh God, that wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> It would not happen. Spock would Vulcan neck pinch him and then just do it on his own. Yeah. Yeah, which would automatically disqualify Spock. Yeah, because that is a fight. Like, that is... If that, that is that is not a fight. That is the beginning of a fight. And Kirk's going to two-fist ch karate chop him when he wakes up. He's going to grab onto a chain link fence and hot kick him in the chest. Yeah. Actually, his stunt double will. Because uh, Shatner's hairpiece will fall off if he tries. And his girdle might pop. Oh, boy. I do like Bill Shatner. I gotta say. I do. He is a very great human being, and I'm glad he's Canadian. Yeah, it's going to be one of those ones that when he passes, I will be very sad. I'll, I will be genuinely sad when when he does pass. Like, he's, he's a pretty good man, despite his character being just the rabious captain in all of starfleet what's your name uh captain james c kirk of the U uss rape i mean enterprise it's like Listen, you just call your ship rape 
Sometimes I call the rape mobile. Oh boy, it was a different time in the 1960s. Yes, it was. Uh, all right. So, again, I'm just establishing some base tones for blending here. Um, we're gonna go back from our. Um, <clears throat> I'm using Arabic shadow, and then we've got basic skin tone, light skin tone, and then a combination of um, those as our shadow colors. So, Cantabric blue and Ardan green as our shadow tones. So, we're just working, building up some nice uh, sweaty skin. That's what we're going to call this. We're going to call this sweaty skin town. I feel like if I ever cut this down into a cogent, you know, like 20 minute video, uh, the title of it should be called sweaty skin tone. You'd watch that video, right? Painting tutorial yeah, on how to paint sweaty men. Oh God, I would so much. And then you know what I'd do? I'd go to one of those lovely uh, 3D printing sites and order the pole dancing custodes. Oh, yeah. Because, yes, someone turned that meme into mini. Yes, they did. So when I first got my 3D printer, the legitimate le first thing I printed was uh, Buff Pikachu. I have Swole Pikachu somewhere in this room. I would have to like turn around and look at the big giant thing of minis behind me, but Soul Pikachu, definitely a good time. Definitely, definitely a good time. I had fun painting a me, so that was fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, I still did not find the new Chaos Warriors outside of the starter box. I'm pretty sure you've seen them. You just don't think it's them. Well, like, I'm I'm seeing the Chaos Warrior Regiment. Yeah. But that's the old mini. Nope. Definitely is not. It's like I'm in there, and it's the old ones. Help him, chat. Sean, somebody. I think I have link suppression on, but somebody... I'm painting. Otherwise, I would be the one to help him right now and be like... Nope, those are the new ones. Because I'm pretty sure that they don't produce the old ones at all anymore. So. Well, there's still Chaos Marauders and Chaos Knights on here. The new Varengard Chaos Knight guys are currently or temporarily out of stock. Yeah, and the Varengard um, are super cool and very expensive for three knights. Yeah, it's like 120 bucks. Yeah. I mean. My super secret project has something along those lines, but slightly different where I'm like, that is too much money for that number of models. But also that those models look real cool. So maybe it's yeah, the right I, amount of money. I, I, I don't know which ones you were seeing, Steve, but I'm looking at the old Chaos Warrior Regiment. Like huh. it's. It's all mono pose. Like I looked, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I'm just not seeing the poses from the, the starter box. But then I look at the spur or the sprue and it's the, the matching backs. Oh, what happened? There we go. Screen just went black. Um, the matching like backs and fronts, all the same pose, elbows tucked into the side. Sword and shield, or sword and axe, or axe and axe, or the one guy gets a banner. Huh. I swear you can get those separately. Like, I, I'm, I know, I'm pretty sure I've seen them at Sentry Box. But, like, I just kind of wanted to look on them on here, but I can't really find them. I can find the, ch the Chaos Chosen, which are the Chaos Warriors with great weapons. Huh. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, it's just I find it a little strange, but it's it's totally fine. So what do we have? It's ten warriors of chaos. Maybe I'll search warriors of chaos. 
instead of Chaos Warriors. Maybe. Warriors of the Chaos Waste? That sounds like a As Black a Library book. novel. That's because of it. So another part of technique, just while I'm vamping here for these models is I am using very tiny strokes, but I'll get it close to the camera here. Every time I'm putting paint on the model, I'm dragging it towards the spot where I want it to be brightest. So across the back of this, that's not even a muscle that any humanoid has. Whatever this muscle is here, I'm dragging it towards the line where I want the reflection from the bottom and from the top. And that just means, because at the end of your stroke, no matter how good your brush is, there's going to be like a little extra dot of paint from where you lift up from. So every time I'm lifting the brush, I want it to be along this line where I want a bright line of like shiny reflectiveness, right? So all I'm doing every time I lift the brush, I'm lifting it to that line. And then I'll go back with the next color and do the same thing. So um, now with light flash, I'm just once again coming in tiny little strokes and this is how we're making his muscles glisten. But these tiny little strokes always end the same way, right? Like they're always ending up at that line. Now, if I want to blend those back in, I drag from the bright spot down towards where I want my mid-tone mid -tones to live. I sound like I'm drunk, but I haven't had a drink in like a year more than a year anyway Is it because of the extra caffeine and cokes you like to drink all the time uh no i it's because right now inside of my head i am literally getting there's a half second delay and i always catch myself trying to say the thing a half second ago which is impossible so yeah it's fun We'll get used to it. It'll be fine. Yeah, that's why I have the stream muted on my computer, but playing very faintly on my phone. Uh, for me, it's not even that. It's because of the delay of Discord. Like, I get a 50-second ping to the Discord server because I'm listening to us talk in Discord. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, and there is enough of delay between my computer and Discord even with gigabit internet that I hear myself talk after I'm talking. So it's fun. Not at all confusing and definitely doesn't make it so that I sound like I'm drunk. Not at all. That's not true. I sound like I'm drunk. I can hear it. I, I sound like I am about to become Professor Steve, which is three to four drinks, Steve. Professor Steve, by the way, has very strong opinions about things that regular Steve has no opinion on. I do not have a professor version of myself. That's fair. My stages of drinking are fun. You've watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, yeah? Oh, yes. Yeah. So you know how there's like six to drink Amy, five drink Amy, four drink Amy? Yes. Yeah. I have very similar things. Uh, seven drink Steve is either vomiting or sad. It's not fun. Nobody likes seven drink Steve. I mean, I've seen seven drink Steve. I like seven drink Steve. When have you seen seven drink Steve? I don't think I've ever been drunk around you, buddy. No, you have been. It was it was around when we first met. Oh, I might have still been drinking then. Yeah, was, I think, you know, it might have been JP's birthday. The one where Dan and I got in the Star Trek argument, but it was before Dan and I got in the Star Trek argument. That's fair. 
I wasn't drinking that night. I'd given up drinking by then. When Dan and I got in the fight and argued the same point, but we're too drunk to realize? Yep. I haven't, like, occasionally, especially because of work. Um, hey, that's Quarter Beer Sean. Aw, Quarter Beer Sean drunk and vomiting? Or is that Professor Sean? No, that's, 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 that's sad, drunken, that's sad and vomiting, Sean, is quarter beer, Sean. Oh, sad quarter beer, Sean. Drunk quarter beer, Sean. There was um, at one point where Sean kept up with beers at, with me at the pub. Wow. So that was when we met uncontrollable vomit rage, Sean? No, he actually, he didn't puke or anything that night. Wow. Good job, buddy. I, I mean, and then Sean, myself, and my brother decided uh, a few weeks later to, hey, let's shoot an entire 2-6 uh, of Jose Cuervo in under 20 minutes. Wow. And then walk to the liquor store and buy a 40 of Jose Cuervo. Yeah, that sounds like a tequila-like decision, if I've ever heard one. Yeah, and we were sober when we left. We were drunk when we got to the liquor store. That does not surprise me that sounds about right and then we did more tequila shots and that, I, I i i puked and then i drank a bunch of water and passed out that seems about right yeah. um, then i woke up in the morning and i felt amazing like i didn't even drink the night before yeah your 20s are a magical time if you're Sean, in your 20s and thinking days. this is garbage you're wrong yeah, like not even like your 20s like your early 20s like pre-25 20s yeah just enjoy being able to abuse your body while you can really take full advantage and when people are like that's unhealthy be like mm, someday I'm gonna be dead none of this will matter so we're just finishing up I'm I'm building a little bit more shadow and contrast into the very bottoms of his muscles here because there's some pretty like he's got some pretty beefy muscles going on there and I know that this looks a little weird so we're going to blend some of the lighter skin tone around this just so that it doesn't look like he has weird bulging bubble muscles like he does right now so we'll continue weird to build sort of muscles. sorry I said Weird bulgy bubble muscles. Say that five times fast. No, nope. I can barely say actual sentences with any He's sort right. of speed without sound. Remember the like last 20 minutes where I've been saying it sounds like I'm drunk? Yeah, we're not going to yeah. go with say anything five times fast right now. But I'll continue to work on the skin tone. I'm probably going to get this guy's skin tone and the similar anybody else that i'm doing in a similar skin tone i'm going to continue working on them we'll probably bring them mostly up to this stage um where we're looking at how to do some of the final highlighting and give some direction to the light and the reflections um i'll work on that probably off cam but when we come back next week we'll work on the other skin tones that i'm gonna do because you can see we've got more of a yellowish skin tone on this guy. We're going to have a much uh, more Caucasian, traditional skin tone on this guy. And we'll probably do some others while we're at it. So we might have another week of skin. But in the meantime, everybody, thank you so much for being along with us, for watching, commenting, being in chat. I'm Steve Thomas, Choice Minis. You can follow me on your favorite social media, at Choice Minis. Adam, where can people follow you? Uh, people can follow me on Instagram at uh, beach underscore vacation underscore Mando and follow my incredibly slow journey into Mandalorian cosplay. Woo! I'm and looking maybe forward. And if I get some money, I <laughs> will do a cosplay of the Doom Slayer. Ooh, neat. Um, if you liked what you saw, give a take a moment, give us a like, subscribe, hit the little bell dealy so that it actually notifies you when we uh go live and come and hang out yeah. if you have suggestions for models or other features you'd like to see or if you want to know more about my gear and stuff like that that's cool 
put them in the description or put them in the comments or you can even email us. You can hit us at choiceminis at gmail.com. You can support us by buying our merch or donating in the tip jar in the description or by just sharing and telling your friends about us. That's a cool way to for all of us to grow our community. Adam, I love you, man. We'll see the love rest. Oh, thanks, bud. We'll see the rest of you on Tuesday. We'll be back with chapter three of Project Never Fallen on Tuesday, April the 20th at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock right here in beautiful Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you around, everybody. Do stuff about white supremacy. Crush it under your boot heels. <laughs>